And we are live. Welcome, guys. Man, I'm so excited to have you guys come back. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had Alex Costa on our live stream. For those of you who don't know, we do a live stream like this uh, every other week, every other Monday. We may start and doing more. We of are them. live. Yeah, one Welcome, second, guys. guys Sorry, man, I'm so. And uh, one of the things that we do on the live stream is we decided, hey, what, what would you guys like if we had some more guests on and then we could do Q&A? So it's kind of like the podcast, what we do live stream Q&As. The things that we do different here on this live stream that's different than almost anybody, Fresh and Fit doesn't do this, whatever podcast doesn't do this, uh, Rolo doesn't do this, nobody else do, does this, is that we have right now 68 people live on Zoom. It's going to get up to around 100 people live on Zoom. So we will let you ask questions live on camera. Obviously, I'm taking a big risk by doing that, but it's something we've been doing for the last two years and it's worked out really well. And I think it's really better for the Q&As uh, to be able to do something like that. So we we do live on Zoom and we also go on U live on YouTube at the same time. For those of you, you guys who are watching us on YouTube, welcome. Uh, I'm going to post some uh, clips in the, or some links in the chat. So if you guys do want to join us on Zoom, that you still can. And of course, our guest today, you guys saw the episode. I mean, I think we just had 125,000 views on the interview that I did with Home Math. I'm a big fan of his work. It was really great. One of the things that I really enjoy uh, is that when the two of us work together is that I am a big fan of, um, I'm a big fan of evolutionary psychology and he studied developmental psychology. So we're kind of looking at two, the, this set of problems through two different lenses, which I think makes the whole thing really, really cool. So I really do, uh, I really like uh, hearing his point of view on a lot of stuff. And so let's go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, Home Math, can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So a couple things. You the when we did the interview, uh, a lot of a few things have changed. Uh some of them that I really liked was that video uh where Mac and Murphy was uh talking to the girl about um Ryan Gosling being average. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do, yes. That was a fun can, one. Can, can you can you can you set up why that's so funny for the audience? Yeah, too? yeah. The, the rundown of that is that me and, and Mac and Murphy had, you know, originally he approached me uh as if I was uh uh you know, mainly a damaging sort of influence to the space and uh, expressed concerns that I was, uh, you know, speaking from a sort of an uneducated place and rallying people who might have ill intentions and that sort of thing. Pearl clutching kind of behavior. And as we got to know each other, you know, our relationship got better uh, and we, you know, spoke to each other with respect and we DM each other on TikTok and whatnot. Uh, but eventually we had a conversation that went for a long time. We did a YouTube live where we talked about the differences between our perspectives and reconciled them and, you know, perspective differences and belief differences and whatnot. And one of the, the main points that I have is what I call the standard female delusion chart, which is just a half joke and a half based on actual uh, dating app data, uh, a chart of how women rate their own attractiveness and how they rate male attractiveness and how basically a lot of modern women are deluded into thinking that they're nines and tens and that high level men are going to marry them when that's not true. And Mackin took exception to that. And he said, you know, you can't say that women are deluded about who they're attracted to. We ironed all that out. And then he went ahead and, and posted uh, or somebody posted videos of an interview where he was having the exact same experience that I had, where this woman was saying that Ryan Gosling is average. And he's like, come on. We can't live in a world where Ryan Gosling is average. And I'm like, yes, that's his, exactly his, what I'm saying. His exact words were, if Ryan Gosling's average, then we all have no fucking chance. That's, that's right. Said. That's right. We really, may as well it's, stop it's, dating. It's one of those things where it's like you're uh, it was it's very similar to the Steven Crowder situation where Steven Crowder is telling you marry the first woman that you uh, have sex with. You know what I'm saying? He, she, yeah. He's giving all these prescriptions and then his wife divorces him and he doesn't have a prenup. Like all the things he said. And then it's like, I'm not mad at Steven Crowder. I'm like. I almost want to be like, welcome. You know what I'm saying? Welcome. Welcome to this. Yeah. And that's how I felt when I saw that Mac and Murphy uh, thing. I was like, hey, Mac, welcome. Welcome to our side. Right. It's like it's like a little bit of a taste of the real world, kind of. It, it, it's sort of there are ideals about how things should be. And then there's the actual practice when you actually put it into practice and you see what people want. And, and how that interfaces with the way that we run our culture and law and everything. And it's like, oh, this is making people act a little out of line. Yeah, it is, it was, it is pretty crazy. And the other thing is, um, and we've discussed this on our interview, was the concept that he believed that these shows were deliberately looking for women to say delusional things yes. and misrepresent women. And so he was on with a podcast with someone he respected enough to at least be a guest on their podcast. Uh, and got the same reaction. And I think that kind of uh, put him back. You know, I can tell, and I don't know if he's watching this, but if Mac and Murphy's watching this, 
I specifically look for college graduates. I specifically look for master's degrees, mothers and women with children on my show to represent, to balance out the girls who are heavy on Instagram and OnlyFans. And I will tell you, they have the same answers. And what I mean by that is, uh, if the first girl says, hey, do you think you're a 10? If the first girl says, yeah, I think I'm a 10, they all tend to think that they're a 10. It's not this delusional thing that's only uh, in this small area in Brickle. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Or yeah. just this specific type of women. I will tell you the only bias is that the women tend to be more on Instagram. Instagram is the way I know that's how whatever books their guests. That's how I book my guests. And that's how uh, Fresh and Fit book their guests. So that would be the only bias. Would you say it's biased more towards women who want attention because they're on Instagram? You could say that, but the, the amount of women in the dating market right now who aren't on Instagram is very small. So I do think it's pretty representative. Yeah. It, you know, the, the way that a space organizes itself, I'm, I'm drawing the integral quadrants here. The way that a space organizes itself is going to attract certain types of thought. So Instagram is set up, you know, something that I'm learning is that Instagram is kind of, people say that it's just like a dating site in drag. It's not really... You know, it, it's a place where women post pictures of themselves and then men go into the comments. So the space that you create is going to draw in the type of person who's attracted to, like TikTok has more female audience and YouTube has more male. They just function in a way that draws different types of minds. Uh, Pinterest was one of those things. I, back when I was driving Uber, I would... Um, speak to people who used Pinterest and they would say, uh, they would encourage me to use it. And I would go, it's kind of a girl thing. And they'd go, what? And it was always girls who, who didn't understand why it was a girl thing. So yeah, the Instagram being that kind of a space, if you're recruiting from there, I think you are going to for sure be attracting a much higher percentage of women who are using it for that purpose. Like there's no way to just pick an app and get a representative sample of the population. You're going to get the kind of people who use the app. Yeah. The, the other thing is like, so I think he took offense to the concept of uh, of us saying the word delusional. And that is pretty common, right? In this space, red yeah. pill or not red pill, the concept of a woman saying, you know, I want a man who's over six feet tall, then you yeah. telling her that's 14% of the population. And her response is, I'm going to get one anyway. And right. Like, well, it's not likely he's going to be faithful. And she's like, no, it is because our chakras aligned and because I have good energy. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the problem is I don't know. And I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not trying to use a pejorative. I don't mean delusional as a pejorative. I mean delusional right. as it would 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 you would use it in the DSM five. They are exactly. literally saying things that are not in alignment with reality. By the way, yeah. so just just so we can inoculate ourselves, home math. Mm -hmm. So do men. Men watch pornography. Oh yeah, of course. They get their they get their dopamine levels set really high. I had a I had a conversation with a guy today who was like, I want to move to Colombia because I feel like it will be easier. And I explained to him, you're going to move to Colombia and you're going to be surrounded by women who absolutely will have sex with you very easily because there's this massive disparity in wealth between you and them. Yeah. And and when you do that, you are going to delusionally start to believe that you're better with women because you're having sex with more of these women. Then you're going to yeah. come back to the States and realize you're not better with women. This is very similar also to men who hire prostitutes on a regular basis. When they yeah. hire prostitutes on a regular basis, they have a, a, a situation where they start thinking, I had this one guy, I swear to God, I still, I'll never forget this. One client comes to me and he goes, yeah, man, um, you know, I paid this girl 2,500 to have sex with her once, but I had sex with her twice. I I bargained. I got a bargain for it. He actually <laughs> thought he had game because he yeah. talked himself because he talked a prostitute into fucking him twice. Yeah, like, it's it's it, I think the stripper that's likes delusion. Me. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing, guys. So I just want to be clear. We're very much aware of the fact that men are delusional, too. It's just those clips don't go viral. And I'll yeah. talk about them all the time. Men frequently, uh, their addiction to porn and their, uh, their again, the, the whole 304 status thing. Women who would never fuck you, you calling them sluts is kind of ridiculous. Like, yeah. I think you should, it, it, whenever I hear, have guys, uh, hear guys criticize women calling them ugly and shit like that, I'm like, let me see your girlfriend. Of course, they never do. That's mm -hmm. also delusional. But when we yeah. talk about women being delusional, then... All of a sudden, we're on some. We become a target, and we're doing this just because we're misogynists, even though we're calling out both sides because there's an evolutionary mismatch, an evolutionary mismatch, and there's a problem. And we're going to try to do something. We're going to try to present things to people to solve the problem that doesn't make us bigoted or misogynists. Right, right. Yeah, it's um, it's it's an unfortunate. I don't know aspect. It's an unfortunate kind of development of the times that we live in that there's too much information you know, less than 100 years ago everybody watched the same tv show it was just did you watch tv yesterday yes. that we all saw the same thing now everybody is watching a different micro program it, it is not going to be impossible to include everything in every piece of speech and that is something that 
the the zeitgeist hasn't caught up to yet. The, you 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 can say something like you know here's the standard female delusion chart, and they'll say well men are delusional too, and it's like yeah it's just not a you're on the wrong show. That's all. It's like there there needs to be a, a men are crazy show too. It's just I don't date them, so I don't have that much to go on. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, for know. sure, definitely, definitely. Um, so going back to some of the other things, I thought one thing you uh, you talked about recently was the concept of computer brain, and I really mm -hmm. love this discussion that we had. Yeah. Where it was like today in the dating market, in order for me to be relevant as a, I'm a 46 year old man and my girlfriend's over 20 years younger than me. In yeah. order for me to be relevant, I kind of have to know what's on YouTube, what's on yeah. TikTok. I kind of have to know like things that are happening, happening for us to talk about stuff. Now, fortunately for us, animals and sports are two things we can constantly communicate about. Mm -hmm. um, but, but in order for me to do that, I have to get on the internet. But like you said before, and you showed that chart, when you're on the internet, it brings you down to a lower level of thinking. So in order yep. for me to be relevant, I got to be on social media. But when I'm on social media, it brings me down to a lower level of thinking. Yeah, it's constant repetition of the, the problem with, I wish I had a way to say this quickly, the, the problem with the way that technology is advancing is that we as creators of technology are making apps and programs that are better and better at getting people to pay attention to them by creating these dopamine loops of here is the perfect thing that gives you the hope for the perfect experience. Then you go meet the guy in real life and he's not perfect because that's never how it works. And then you go back to the app and you see someone else who's more perfect. That, that um, inter interface between the technology and the human mind is causing people to live in these constant loops that we are not designed for and that have never really happened. And it happens in so many different ways. It happens. There's like online gambling. There's the attention cycle for women. There's the pornography cycle for men. Uh, it's, it's, we're not prepared to handle this much access and it's causing people to behave in ways that I think is, I think that it's the primary root of the increase of mental illness in our time. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the primary reasons. You know, I, I've, we haven't discussed this. The other reason why I think mental illness and our time has not, uh, it, it still exists, it, th those that are genetic, like say sociopathy, mm -hmm. I think it's because the selection pressure against them are gone. Mm -hmm. What I mean, what I mean by that is, so let's consider a woman who's <laughs> extreme. Oh, it's fine. You're right. Oh, sorry. sorry. Mm. Let's consider a woman who's like extremely physically attractive. She still is going to have the ability to breed, even if she's a sociopath. In fact, often she may be even more charming because of that. So I think that's another reason is that for some of the survival characteristics that were necessary previously, a lot of times the man who's a sociopath who may have been weeded out from the tribe previously, now he's a computer genius or a politician or or things that didn't exist in the ancestral period that all that exists now. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. There's there's a wall of of um, anonymity that technology creates that you can just hide behind. It's a I've been meaning to upgrade this illustration, but um, <clears throat> the pool of people that you have to draw from that you have to to speak to in real life used to be small, and you would not only know only a few people, but you would know everyone they knew as well. So your information about those people would be very rich. Online, you have a huge pool of people that you know nothing about. So yeah, those selected those selective pressures that would cause people to fit into functioning social groups are pretty much gone when you when you find people through technology. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty spot on. And it may in fact be the case that yeah, genetic traits that that would otherwise have been getting weeded out are not being. So, yeah. Um, you know what's interesting? Uh, I, I just thought about this is heuristics, right? So heuristics is some, something like if I know someone closely, I should be able to tell uh, a lot of data about them and be able to make decisions uh, based on a full breadth of knowledge. So if I lived in a small tribe and there was maybe 15 people that I interacted with every day or maybe 10, I would get to know those people really well. Heuristics are kind of a thing that we use uh, to try to make a quick uh, educated guess on something when we have incomplete information. Well, social media is nothing but incomplete information. It's not 15 people, it's millions. And so I think it triggers heuristics, which I think in a lot of cases is the reason why we get into Palestine, Israel. It's the reason why we get into Ukraine, Russia. It's the reason why we get into some of these arguments is because people, like you said before, they drop into a lower state of thinking. Their, their heuristics are triggered rather than critical thinking. And so the only thing that you can do in those situations since you have incomplete information is to fight, is to say, I am good and they are bad. And so 
which then again, then of course feeds the algorithm because then that's entertaining stuff to watch. And then we get into this endless cycle, which like you said before, may actually cause other types of mental illness like depression, uh, you know, OCD or things like narcissism that, that also may be caused by it. Yeah, exactly. That, that the low level processing that it keeps you in plus the experience of of disagreeing so strongly with other people I, I in in my opinion when people are using social media they're spending most of their time right around these levels and they're not not a lot of people take the time to really think about it and back off and and be objective people are seeing something having an experience visual and auditory and then they are projecting how they how they think this other person they're interacting with or this other party they're interacting with would feel and then if if it gets to the point where they get into the comments it's almost always just like a gut reaction and there's so much tribalism because it's like you're saying a thing i'm not used to and then i'm replying back with something you're not used to and in evolutionary history that would almost never happen if you were if you were so far outside of the tribe it would just you would just not be welcome those pressures would you know people yeah, yeah. would and, be pressured to yeah and, and, and heuristics an example of heuristics back during that time is you saw another tribe and you'd have to go kill them like mm -hmm. it wouldn't be like you you're because your information is so incomplete you have to kill them for your own safety you don't have any yeah. choice yeah and so that was the type of situation it's like an unfamiliar environment must kill and you see animals like animals of lower level good go approach a gorilla and see what yeah. happens the gorilla yeah. doesn't know that you don't mean it harm it will still kill you and that's yeah. that's the same situation which kind of uh segues into my next thing, which I really loved. Um, there was a mischaracterization by one woman where she was talking about other primates and the way that they mate yeah, and then trying to compare that to homo sapiens. So now just so we understand, uh, primates have a lot in common with hominids. We're, we're hominids. Those are homo sapiens, homos, hominids. There's been several, there's been 15 species of hominids that we know of. We're the last ones. We're the only ones left. Primates come through a different tree. And we had a common ancestor before homo sapiens. There was Australopithecus. And before Australopithecus, there was an, a common ancestor about three or 4 million years ago. And that out, common ancestor, some of them went to climb trees and grew fur. And the other ones started to work, uh, uh, walk upright and then got rid of their snout and grew a nose and then started to have sweat glands and, uh, and be able to walk upright with opposable thumbs. Mm -hmm. Those are, those are, this is the primates. And then these are the hominids. And so one of the things that they were doing is that they were kind of like saying, well, because bonobos have an egalitarian sexual structure, but gorillas don't, they were trying to regulate that or trying to equate that to what homo sapiens were doing. Yeah. Yeah. This, this idea that we can look at another species and model our behavior off that species is kind of silly. The way that our species behaves is the way that it behaves. Something that that type of thinking tries to do is it tries to absolutize everything in the way things work. It's never the way we've developed. It's never ourselves. It's always the the surroundings. So they'll say things like, our society has made us be this way. Well, who made society? It was us who chose that. And we did it with our minds that evolved through our bodies. So this is the way that we make things happen. We have a really complicated social structure that we use for mate selection. And it's not monogamous and it's not polyamorous. It's people are trying to maximize for something that you can't get without denying someone else what they want. The The male strategy and the female strategy are fundamentally opposed to each other on a certain level, unless conditions are impossibly perfect, which they never are. Mm. So when when I hear people talking about that, I mean, there was one time I went to this uh, pizza place, this beer and pizza house. And the waitress was telling me how chimpanzees were vegan and peaceful. And it was like, you saw one thing for 10 seconds on the internet, didn't you? Because chimpanzees are like the most violent. They just, it, it, it's its called something like the sand under the beach or the appeal to nature. They look at something that is less sophisticated and they say, well, if it's less sophisticated, it must be closer to nature and nature can't be wrong. But none of that is true. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, it goes the other way too. Um, you know, people don't like the fact whenever in evolutionary psychology, you come to a determination that people are the way they are because of their natural proclivities. It doesn't mean that it's right. Meaning like, for yeah. instance, uh, uh, a man walking on his wife and she's having sex with another man, him wanting to murder the two of them, that is absolutely based in evolution. Please, yeah, for I sure. will show you documentation. Anyone who wants to argue that that has to do with a small penis syndrome or that the man is insecure, you mm -hmm. are fucking deluding yourself. That is based yeah. absolutely in evolution. We see other uh, animals do the same thing. Now, 
you acting on it is not good for society. Still right. murdering someone. I mean, okay, your wife cheated on you. It's time to find another wife or to get out of yeah. that relationship. Yeah, murdering them. Yeah. Murdering them affects her family, possibly your children. It's mm -hmm. better to not murder your wife if she were to cheat on you. And so if you were to understand that, that's one of the things where even though evolutionary psychology creates that jealousy and rage, it doesn't make it right. It's right. about what is and not about what ought. And so that's, yeah. I think that's what, where people find the difference. And but, but specifically going back to the chimp versus gorilla situation, there was the girl and she was making the, the, assertion that what we should all do is women should be able to have sex with who they want and live in a communal tribe so yep. that all the men raise their children. And it's, yep. and you were describing what would happen if we lived in a society like that. Yeah. It's what's happening now. It's if you, if you do that, all she's really describing is the ideal female sexual strategy where she gets to have sex with who she wants when she wants. And so decide who gets her pregnant because her body knows when she's fertile and then draw on the resources of everybody, whether they're getting to reproduce or not. And, and the way that she said it was everyone sleeps with everybody, but the way that it actually works is that the women become way more choosy, not less. This is when you, when you open things up. The, the women go from selecting someone on their level after getting to know them to, oh, oh, am, are, is there no uh, punishment anymore for sleeping with who I want? Well, then we're all going to go to the top. And now yeah. these guys are paying and these guys are getting everything and then they drop out and quit and uh, and they have, you know, loneliness epidemics and everything. And it's like, well, you are getting what you want. You said you wanted to change society in this way. You kind of did to some degree. And it's horrible. It's no one's happy. Women are on uh, SSRIs. They're complaining, you know, the where of all the good men gone is a meme. It's one of the most common things they say. There's that whole statistic about 30% of men are either virgins or not capable of finding anyone within the last year. It's um, it's a pretty big departure from, it, it seems to me like people are less happy and getting what they want less because of it. It's, yeah, yeah, so if you keep that chart up, that, that's a, a great chart. If you show mm -hmm. that, what will happen is, so if you guys look over here on the right, one of the things that, that she was talking about, and obviously I don't want to, if I show the clip, we're going to get flagged on YouTube, even though I know yeah. how it wouldn't do that. It just, yeah. it's just something that happens. Um, yeah. And if you guys go back and, and watch the clip, it's one of his most recent clips that he, one of the most recent shorts, when he goes back through there, the girl is basically stating, Hey, wouldn't it be better if we could all just sleep with whoever we wanted, like bonobos do and bonobos do, by the way, bonobos are so non-selective as primates that the men have sex with other men and they're not even gay. The males yeah. have sex with other males and they're not gay. They're just having sex with whatever's in front of them. You yeah, they do it, as a, it as a social function. Correct. It's just a social function. The act of sex is just like shaking hands for them. So yeah. in this situation, um, so what will happen is the women, what they want is we can have sex with whoever we want, right? But the guys that they would normally put in the friend zone or not see as attractive, those men would still be involved in parental care. You guys remember it takes a village. Mm -hmm. So every, all the men would be involved in the parental care of the children, but the women would be able to have sex with who they want. And like we've said before, all the women are going to choose 10 and nine and eight, probably just 10 and nine. <laughs> and then what will happen is, and this is where the part that she misses and you illustrated perfectly is what happens is five, four, three, two, and one. I'm talking about those blue men over there on the right side. They are now receiving nothing so they they have a ton of responsibility, but they get no reward or authority for their behavior. Does that make sense? So now they're in charge of pro procuring and providing for the tribe, but they receive nothing for it. And then that's one of the things where society starts to break down. Yeah, yeah, that's you, you have to incentivize them. This was there's another video I did a while back with uh, this guy named uh, Yuval something, where he was um, arguing Yuval with Noah something. Harari, yeah, the the author of Sapiens. Um. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, I don't remember exactly, but it, it was, uh, he was saying something about uh, how n men who are, um, you know, not getting attention from women, what is their incentive to work? Well, what about paying your rent? That isn't, uh, living a life where you know you're doing nothing but going to work and paying rent isn't going to give you any kind of satisfaction. They, they ignore that. They sort of ignore the needs of these people. They consider themselves the more, you know, empathic the more moral side of the argument but then there's this whole enormous chunk of people who are feeling denied any kind of of hope or or future and and the the response is so eat cheetos and play video games who cares be happy with that and that's not going to that's not going to work you're, you're creating enormous numbers of people who are so dissatisfied with the way that society is treating them that they 
there was some quote from somewhere. I wish I remembered where it was. It was something like a, a, a child who doesn't feel the warmth of the village will burn it down to feel its warmth or something. Yes. Yeah, if they're not if they're not being included in some way that they feel is satisfactory, they're they're not going to just smile and go, "Oh, sure, I'll do work all the time for nothing." They're not going to do that. Yeah, you you had a clip where a woman was talking about a hundred years ago how women were you know ostracized and uh, you know oppressed, and mm -hmm. and so now because men are lonely, then maybe the 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 thing to do is to throw them in the, lock them yeah. up in insane asylums. And just I just I, I'm just trying to get people to understand this, okay. If you're going to let a group of society, if you continue to say that they're a, a privileged class and that nothing bad can happen to them, eventually when something bad happens to them, you can't act like they don't have muscles, can't vote, don't have jobs, don't have money, don't have an ability to say anything. And then you can't be surprised when they finally say something. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, again, we'll go back to the Civil Rights Act. You can't consistently oppress African-Americans for years and then be confused when they want some level of equality. You cannot consistently, because I've said this before, patriarchy does not help men and, and, and hurt women. Patriarchy helps a small group of men at the top and it yeah. really oppresses women. The true victims of a patriarchy are low status men, men who have no sexual abundance, men who don't have a wife, or can never find a wife, men who cannot have no upward financial mo mobility. That is the actual true victims of patriarchy. It is not yeah. women. You know what I'm saying? And like I, one of the things I really loved is right after we did our interview, you talked about how women have it easy or women have it easier, but they don't have it easy. It's actually men at the top who have it easy. Yeah. This is the best place to be in terms of yeah. comfort and getting what you want. And then uh, pretty much all women have it easier than the, than the lower men. It's like people treat them like they don't deserve anything if you if you don't if you're a woman of any any quality and you don't have enough someone will feel bad for you there's a place for you to go there's women's shelters everywhere there's no men's shelters that's and they're all out sleeping on the street homelessness is overwhelmingly male there's there's in the human mind there is just a lack of empathy built in for men and nature is cruel and that's the way that nature is cruel that their hat like nature needs to design species to have functions that exclude and get rid of the weak. You can't give to everybody an equal amount of of support because then the weak would grow as well as the strong and the whole species would be ruined. You have to like some people should have more kids and some people should have less or else the whole species gets weaker. But there's a level of balance that you need to keep functioning for society to work because you you have to extract value from these men and if you're not giving them a sufficient level of value back they won't agree to it and that's yeah. that's the way it's going to be until we have robots making the the electricity run and the and the water come to your house if if men have to do that and they're not getting anything for it then they're they're not going to do it yes and you and you also express that in, in forms of taxation where men uh, generally mm -hmm. pay more in taxes yeah. than women, and in part because they make more money. Uh, mm -hmm. But women tend to benefit more from taxation mm -hmm. uh, than men. And then eventually we get to a point where it's like, what am I paying these taxes for? And then you start seeing lots of wealthy men. What do they do? They move to Dubai, they mm -hmm. move to Puerto Rico, they move to different places like that because they feel like they're paying more than their fair share. Um, mm -hmm. This is something, a really important thing uh, to touch on because one of the big issues that I have a lot of times when people want to join Men of Action or uh, I have clients come in is there's this sort of black pill belief whenever you show the hypergamy chart mm -hmm. that it's like it's hopeless for those men at the bottom because you call them not people, right? And we're saying you say that in a joking way when you call them yeah. not people. Yeah. But the thing is, there's a lot of guys who are short or they believe they, they belong to an ethnic group that women don't find attractive yeah. or they're not physically, you know, their face is not symmetrical or whatever reason they don't have a masculine jawline. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they don't have a choice. And one of the things that I think that we have to make a distinction, and this is where the answer actually is, it is short-term dating versus long-term dating. And more yeah. importantly, it is a fam unfamiliar environment versus a familiar environment. So in an yeah. unfamiliar environment, if you want to show the hypergamy chart, or if you want to show something to the effect of where 80, or the, the chart where it shows how uh, men and women view each other, that's yeah. where, where mo that, what's the unfamiliar environment? The unfamiliar environment is, cold approach at the club, right? Dating apps, you have an yep. advantage if you're good looking. Mm -hmm. uh, dating apps is going to be another one. Uh, another one is going to be just like sliding into a girl's DM on social media. These are unfamiliar environments or just, you know, meeting someone at a party, even having someone in introduce you that starts off as an unfamiliar environment. 
And yeah. then what you want to do is you move over to a familiar environment. Do you have that? Do you have, or is that a, one on your computer? The one with the, um, yeah, the, it's uh, not, it's not a printout. Okay. So, so the difference between familiar environment and unfamiliar environment is the, is the main, it's funny because Tristan just walked in and he was the one who brought this up. It's mm -hmm. a massive object, objection that people have. It's not that if you aren't in the type of the of top of hypergamy chart that you should give up, what you should do is not try to combat those men in an yep. unfamiliar environment. You should do things to try to get them into a familiar environment before, yep. before Chad Thundercock has his way with her in the unfamiliar environment. Right. Yeah, that that's the the loss of um, of social unity, the loss of of you know sharing the same views and coming together and and being in the same place at the same time. It just keeps it keeps people disconnected. It keeps people in this space where everybody is making choices based on shallow initial physical attraction, and it it when people even work together that I made a video about a girl who worked at a Valvoline, I think. And she was talking about how she used to think her coworker was hot. And then later she met up with him and didn't feel that way at all. And it was, it was, that's this moving that way with familiarity. Once you are in the same place at the same time as someone, and you feel like, Oh, this person is my kind of person. It all equalizes a lot more, a lot more. And we have, we've lost that and we're losing it more and more. So everything's atomized and and it's reverting us back to kind of a um almost a state of nature, almost like an like an animal barbarian level state of nature. Um I've got I've got the delusion chart up here. I found it on Google. Terrific. Um, Thank you. And so you guys can see what we're talking about here, men rating women, women rating men. So do you guys see where it says LT and ST, that's short term and long term. So it's really imp important to understand. If you're a guy who's been like, because we are legitimately here to help. If you're a guy who's been in it, look at that one right there. It says women rating men short term. It's this uh, the the middle on the left there. If this is how you feel the world treats you, and I've definitely felt like this before, please understand this is because you're dealing with women in an unfamiliar environment that have been overstimulated by left swiping on dating apps and by seeing copious amounts of men giving them attention on Instagram and possibly some of them even going on OnlyFans and making money from their physical attractiveness and then denying men who are literally giving them money. The women see men in that in that uh, category. So you see over there in the far left, look over to the right in the middle. This is purple. This is women rating men long term. And you see how it starts to look more like a normal distribution. So one more time, guys, if you don't want to feel like you are in this situation there on the left, then you want to go from a unfamiliar environment to a familiar environment. Right. That's what we teach in men of action. That's what social circle game is, is to get women into a familiar environment. What you don't want to do is what Mac and Murphy was talking about, which was uh, uh, in short-term dating, things are unequal, but there's good news because in long-term dating, things start to equal out. What you don't want to do, what I would highly not recommend, is for you to wait for the woman to go through her short-term dating, then she gets to you, and then at that point, she settles for you, kind of mm -hmm. like uh, Sheryl Sandberg when she talks about, it's sexy when a man takes out the garbage, whatever. It's like, it's like, but in the beginning, date the bad boys, date the bartenders and the male strippers and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Because when she gets to that point, I know this this comes off to some people. This may come off as you know misogynistic or whatever. But the studies show that as we get to higher body counts, the likelihood of a woman staying in a marriage becomes lower and lower. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying I would rather you meet someone before they go through that short term uh, dating area and then get them into a familiar relationship or get them to a familiar environment so that you have a better chance. Yeah. Rather than yeah. waiting when w waiting till she's 33 and she's like ready to settle down, she's she's had her epiphany. Yeah, that's what I'm communicating with. Uh, uh, this is my new version of zones. That's what I'm communicating by. I changed this from the other men. I changed it to purity and built it out. You're looking for a woman who hasn't spent her teens and 20s going after all these crazy attractive guys who it doesn't matter who you are. There's always going to be someone who's either taller or better looking or richer or funnier or that doesn't matter who you are. Someone has something over you. And so if a woman has been with so many guys that you can never be number one for her anymore, then she's only going to be able to settle for you and will always feel kind of blah. And that's the 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 way that um that promiscuity reduces um what do you call it? Uh bonding. What do you call it? Uh staying in relationships. Pair yeah, bonding. Yeah, pair yeah, bonding. Yeah. Pair bonding. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the way that it reduces it is is once once somebody's been overstimulated enough times, 
then everyone's going to kind of look like not the best thing. I love it. Yeah. Um, the other one, uh, I love this one was, was kind of the Peter Pan syndrome. A woman was asking why men don't want to commit. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember this? Uh, can you talk about this, this concept where women believe that it's men being immature because they don't want to commit? Yeah. And that's, it's really complicated because we live in a time where, you know, all of the most mature, responsible, intelligent, successful men that I know will talk to me about being scared of marriage because what do you get? She doesn't leave you. That's all that you get. And, and what do you pay? Well, you could lose everything and you don't know how the relationship is going to evolve. So it's, it's kind of like, it used to be that you would draw borders around the relationship and you'd say, if this happens, it's like a contract. If you do this bad thing, then I have this protection, but men have fewer and fewer protections. And now marriage is kind of like, I'm not going to stay with you unless you sign the contract that says the woman is protected, but the man doesn't have any protection. That's one of the influences that's causing men to not want to commit. Another one of the influences is men who can get attention are going to be really tempted to do it. And they're going to be really tempted to, to have as many situationships going as they can. It's another thing I saw when I was doing Uber. I would just drive girls back and forth to the, the guy they were seeing. And they would ask me over and over again, like, how do I get him to commit? You don't. He doesn't want to. He's got seven. You don't trade seven for one. Um. Yeah. The, uh, the, I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. The, it's it, the way that society has progressed has it's gamified things to cause men to see long term commitment as a huge amount of risk in exchange for little or no benefit. Yeah, that that is uh, definitely a, a very very potent argument, and I can see that, and it's the reason why marriage rates do go down is because you you are generally risking a lot. Uh, and one of the other things, you know, I've had, uh, I've talked to James Sexton about this. Mm -hmm. It's if you were to ask somebody, what is the most important financial decision you'll probably make in your entire life? Is it buying a house or a car or getting a mortgage or whatever? And they're like, no, it's marriage. Yeah. But it's of all those things. There's the least amount of information. We, we There's a ton of information on why to not get married. And there's a ton of information from divorce attorneys, but like what could happen to you when things go bad? There's nowhere near as much information on that as there is on buying a house, flipping a home, buying a car, mm -hmm. so much more. You are so much more informed in those decisions than you are when it comes to marriage. Um, and it's, it's, it, it ends up being, you know, very, very difficult for people to, uh, to figure out what to do here. Um, yeah. Going on to what we were saying before, the uh, one of the things I, I really do uh, enjoy is your engineering triangles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had one that you just recently uh, put up that was was pretty great. Again, can you go over? Can you go over some of them? It, two, it, all three of these things can't be equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like reducing things down to the the lowest possible level of simplicity. Um, the first one that I came up with was this one. The uh, you you can only have two if you want the government to guarantee equal pay and you want for men to have so much more money than you that they can give you experiences you can't give yourself then men are going to collect a lot of women because if men are making more money than you then women can find men who make more money than them if you're making equal but you still want superior men then you're going to be all chasing after a few guys there isn't any way to organize society where you get all three things if if you if you have these, you know, diversity laws that just place women in jobs and in college. And, you know, what is it? 60% of colleges women now is it, it's more right than now, that, right? 60, 60, no, it's, it's 68% graduate, I believe undergrad, but 60% enrollment. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so women me, are, meaning, meaning men are still enrolling at 40% and then yeah. dropping out. Right. For whatever reasons, yeah. that's another yes. whole discussion. But when, when that it, like, and it's artificial, if you had an equal playing field, and you had everybody gets the same rules, men are naturally going to work harder because that's just the lifestyle that it is to be a man. They're going to work harder and earn more rewards. What we have is, you know, and I need to flesh this out a lot. People keep asking me for examples of this, and I'm like, how do you not know? So I'm going to have to actually do research and list it all. But the government is redistributing the, award, the rewards, and it's artificial, and it, then it creates an environment in which women are just not attracted to the men that they would have been attracted to. They look at them and they go, well, why do I need you if you don't make more money than me? And then they're fighting over the same few guys and they go, where have all the good men gone? It's like, you fired them. <laughs> 
Yeah, do you guys do you guys understand if you can show the triangle again one more time? I just want to yeah. make sure everybody understands this because it's it's like it's so genius, right? So the yeah. top one is equality. So it's fine. Wim, wim, men and women want equality. I think what I would want is for everyone to have the ability to make the same amount of money and not have things come in their way, but they don't need to have equal pay, right? It's not it's a quality of it's not a quality of outcomes. There's nothing yeah. in the US Constitution that is about a quality of uh, outcomes. It's life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. You are not guaranteed happiness. You're not guaranteed the, the pursuit of happiness. That's where civil rights uh, legislation comes from because you are infringing on people's pursuit of happiness based on their skin color. So that's a different, this is not a, what, what women wanted was a quality of outcomes and not a quality of competition, right? And mm -hmm. so because they want equality at the same time, their genetics wants, and this is the dollar sign on the bottom right here, they want a man who makes more than them. So yep. I wanted a quality of outcomes, but I still want a man who makes more than them. So if I do that, then I'm only choosing from a small number of men. Again, 14 or was it 17 percent of men uh, over make uh, over one hundred thousand dollars a year. But I need a man to make more than me. And there's actually studies that show this. It's about yep. one point six, eight to one. So if I if I make one hundred from a female, I make one hundred thousand dollars a year. I want a man, man who makes about one hundred sixty eight thousand dollars a year. That's about on average what they want. So the first part is cultural. The second part on the bottom right there, that is genetic. Uh, women want men who are bigger, taller, stronger than them and make more money. Yep. And then the, the, the part on the bottom left that's very frustrating is also genetic, is that those men at the top now are going to have 5, 10, 20 women. They're going to have women pursuing them because even in this egalitarian society, they still make more money than more people than most people. And mm -hmm. so they're going to have a lot of um they're going to have a lot of women. So that, that's the problem, is, is that you can't have all three. You can't have men not having a lot of women and equality, and you still want uh men to make more money than you. And that's what you're that's what you're showing in this engineering triangle. And I think it's genius. Don't you have a new yeah. one? You have another one? You yeah, there were, I did a few. Um, they're not in, they're not in the most highly organized order. Where was number two? It's not there. There's number two. Uh, the, the one that I did for men was if you want, um, you know, uh, uh, action right away and you don't want to commit, um, then you can't complain about women having high body counts. Yeah. If you if you if you want a society where you're not committing to someone who you want to have sex with right away, then relationships are not always going to work out because not everyone is compatible. So everyone's going to rack up the numbers. You can't complain about that. So men will say they want all three of those things. Oh, I'm not ready to commit. Uh, I don't want to wait a month to get to know you. And if you've been with 10 guys, you're, you're not worth dating. You, you can't. Right. Physical reality doesn't allow for that. Yeah. So uh, the overall uh hedonism uh what was the word we're looking for uh promiscuity of society mm -hmm. you can't uh, again uh, oh if 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 a small group of men uh, are having sex with a lot of women you can't have some women with low body counts but if all men had the ability to have sex with all the women they could then when they wanted to settle down there would be no women left with low body counts the lo yep. the logic doesn't work out so yeah i uh, totally understand with that that's 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 a pretty good one as well and then the yep. other one uh i really love this uh when we talk about women want attention from men that they're already attracted to. This is a really huge uh, yeah. misunderstanding that a lot of men have because they'll watch TikToks and women will describe a thing they want. And then you yeah. look at who they date and then you see hubristophilia where women are like wanting to date serial killers. Yeah. And it's like, these things don't make sense. And what you're hearing from often, often, there are a few exceptions. Like I think Sadia Khan is pretty sharp. Actually, I had Ke mm -hmm. Kezia Noble on last week. I think she's pretty sharp. But often what you'll hear from women is they're giving you advice on how to... Uh, turn on a woman who's already attracted to you because she cannot conceive of a man she's not attracted to generating attract attraction in her. But if you've done any kind of study in this space with seduction, manosphere, red pill, pickup, whatever, you know men can generate attraction. There are triggers to do so, even if women don't believe that those things are real. My girlfriend doesn't believe it's real. My girlfriend legitimately believes I just fell out of the sky and I, she was just attracted to me. And she mm -hmm. thinks that she would have dated me when I was 21, which is of course nonsense. Mm -hmm. But that that's how most women feel about most men. So going yeah. back to what I was saying before, it's when women are giving this advice, for those of you, remember we talked about short-term versus long-term and how that's confusing. Yeah. This is another thing where a lot of guys get very confused. And this is the concept where you listen to a woman's advice. It's not that what she's telling you is deliberately nefarious or negligent. What she's telling you is based on her perception, which is she is telling you what a man, so when, when a girl goes, express yourself and get out of the friend zone, which is of course fucking terrible advice. Or she's like, take her flowers to work. 
Yes, if Tom Brady or fucking Leonardo DiCaprio take a woman flowers to work, that can actually work well for them because their status is so outrageously high. For a man you're already attracted to, it works. Yeah. But if it's for a man you're not already attracted to, it gets confusing. Yeah, if if she's not attracted to, if you're if she doesn't already like you or wouldn't like you right away, and you put in that level of effort, the best that you're gonna get to is the friend zone. That's the that's she's gonna say, oh, he's so nice, and I like having him around. Usually, when guys try to make that kind of effort and they're not physically attractive or emotionally attractive to women, they end up uh, in the creep zone over here, where it's like, oh, please don't buy me flowers. Please don't give me that attention. It makes me feel bad. Women will tell you that these are the things that make them like you because they're not paying attention to these things. They're thinking of the guys that I feel good about physically and in their competence and confidence. I want them to do this. They're not thinking about guys who might be short or frumpy or not that good at making money or whatever. They're just not considering them. That, that women will not tell you how to get out of that pit and and be attractive anyway so that they will value these things. That's the worst part of, of dating for men is that when they look for advice, all they get is be nice, be nice, do these nice things. And then it doesn't like it doesn't turn women on. It can make them appreciate you like a brother, but it doesn't make them want you. There's There's a whole other set of things to do for that. So this is the new one, what because we were talking about good guy, good guy traits and bad guy traits. Is yeah. it so this is is this like the new this is the new one from show? yeah from last week, yeah. Okay. So guys, for those of you who don't know, man, you might want to take a screenshot of this. This is so fucking important. Mm -hmm. So many of you guys come to me and you have no bad boy traits. And the reason why is because you were taught by your church, mommy, and Disney to have good boy traits and that somehow you are going to like, if you just stamped the good boy trait card enough, you were going to get one free sex at the end. It's yep. like, use this for one free sexual intercourse. It doesn't work yeah. like that. Okay. It's, attraction is not a choice. Yeah. The bad boy traits. This is why I said before, I mean, obviously I was you being hyperbolic when I said this, but I was like, the more you things that you do that women tell you to not do, the more outrageously attractive they become to you. Obviously yeah. to a certain extent, we don't want to do some things. Yes. Some things, some things, but, uh, but that is the case. It's like the bad boy traits are the thing. When you hear women consistently complaining about a man, I'm not going to turn the, uh, the muting uh, off the audio on yet, but if mm -hmm. you hear a woman consistently complaining Oh my God, I can't stand this fuck boy. But you've gone out and hung out with her in a social situation three times and she complains mm -hmm. about the fuck boy. Mm -hmm. It's because she's fucking the guy she's complaining about. Listen to me, guys, one more time. I need you to hear this. When she's consistently complaining about the temperament of the guys that she's talking about, it's because she's fucking him. And she's complaining to you about this and she's not fucking you. One more time, pay it. Some of some of you guys, some alarm bells and some lights are going off now. You have the yeah. first time you're kind of coming to this realization. Again, what, what, write it in the chat if you guys know the answer. Ready? If a woman is consistently, emphatically expressing to you, I would never fuck a guy on the first date. I would never fuck. Why is she saying she would never fuck a guy on the first date? Put it in the chat, guys. Why is a woman screaming to you? I can't believe it. I would never fuck a guy because she has fucked guys on the first date. Got it? Yep. You guys understand? Uh, there's a lot of people. Dude, there's 7.8 billion people on this planet. There's a lot of them I'm going, I'm not going to fuck. Do you know what I'm going to say about them? Nothing. If I'm not going to sleep with somebody, I'm not going to mm. fucking talk about them. That's the way it works. But why do women talk about it? It's because their emotions are not in alignment with their actions. And that's the reason why you get some of these, these comments. And so again, going back to this, this type of situation, some of you guys are going to get heavy in the gym. You're going to start running a scalable business. And you're going to notice that the less you make women a priority, the more they're just going to want to come into your life. But if you ask women the question, they're not going to tell you that that's bad advice. They're going to tell you things like flowers and expressing your feelings and, get, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it just doesn't make any sense. And then they're going to complain about men with multiple women. Then one day, if you're lucky, you're going to become one of those men with multiple women. And then what just I'm not not for your whole life, but I think you should have a period of, of, of your life where you do have some level of abundance. And when you do that, you're going to notice, wait a second, these women who were complaining about what I was doing literally complained right before they had sex with me. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. And then that's when you get into the understanding of that's when the realization will happen for you. And you understand the difference between bad boy traits and good boy traits. Yep. Yep. I just wanted to um, mention really quick, if any, if anybody uh, wants uh, digital or printed copies, go to uh, go to my link tree and you can you can pick up copies of this and study it on your own time.
Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I've definitely set it up. Oh, by the way, Rolo Tomasi's here. I've gotten him uh, to start watching your stuff. We're going to get him on uh, for a Q&A here in a second. Nice. Uh, beautiful. Okay, uh, the other thing is I really enjoyed was guitars versus Rubik's Cube. So this kind of, yeah, yeah. this what we just talked about sets up the framework for what you're saying. Women consistently, when I say, hey, do you think it's sexy when a guy reads a lot of books and highly intelligent? And women are like, yeah, that's sexy. And I'm like, I read more than any of you. You girls don't care that I read. What they care is that you stimulate them. And what women want yeah. to believe is that they're so sapiosexual. Yeah. The reality is that's not something that turns them on. You go into like women saying they like the Rubik's Cube, but they actually like the guitar. Yeah. It turns them on more. That's that's the way that the that the good guy traits interact with the bad boy traits. Once you once you are attractive and then you do these things, then women go, they're even more attracted. But if they don't, if if women feel this way about you, if this is what you look like to them, and you learn to do you know Rubik's cube stuff and and good boy stuff, they're not going. It's not going to light anything up for them. the The way that you have to compensate for that is first of all physically, like looks maxing is the number one thing for attraction. And once you have maxed out on that, then do things that make women feel like that. And once you get them feeling like that about you, then you do the nice stuff on top. Can you, can you go over, look, so I, I recently had a uh, FedEx fearless on and I recently had Alex Costa on and we mm -hmm. went over like specifics, look, looks maxing things. Can you go over, do you have any advice when it comes to looks maxing? Only broadly. See, I'm working on, I've been promising everybody this video called self maximize. And it's a very, very, very difficult video to create because I'm trying to basically take my whole life coaching practice and put it into one video, which I'm finding is not possible to do. My advice for looks maxing is do it. Get get look as good as you can. The details are not really my area of expertise. I know that you should have you should aim for low body fat. Men are ideal at 10% body fat. You should be muscular. You don't have to be a steroid bodybuilder, but have muscles. A lot of women say that they don't like muscles, but they do. They'll, you know, they, they will say out loud, oh, guys with muscles, but then when you have them, you catch them looking at you. Um, you know haircut, hygiene, get dressed, wear proper clothes. I was talking to a guy the other day about, he said that people don't perceive him the way that he wants them to. And I went on webcam with him and I said, well, the way you're dressed is not great. And he goes, what's wrong with being comfortable? Well, then don't look the way that people like, you know, you, you clean yourself up, look sharp. Beyond that, I don't have a whole lot of expertise on fashion. I could take a look at you and say, what's wrong with what you're doing, but get in shape, get a good haircut, maintain hygiene. Like one of the things that I'm putting in self-maximize is remember how much effort women put into hygiene. They, they spend, they're always late. They spend all this time in the shower. They spend time on their hair. They rip out their eyebrows. They paint them back on. Try to be like that. Don't leave the house until you're perfect. You know, a lot of guys will overlook that and they go out kind of dumpy and, and, you know, only half the effort put in and then they wonder why people don't like them well it's because you're not you're not on the peak of what yeah. you can be yeah let me recommend guys uh, for a quick and dirty to two buddies of mine uh for when it comes to like hair care and beard care and uh, facial care and clothing i would uh i would recommend alex costa and then when it comes to physique and like literally like shaping your beard and your haircut, that kind of stuff, I would recommend uh, checking out Fit X Fearless. And so just like a really, a couple of them that are really quick and dirty. If you want to accentuate your jawline, which which shows more masculinity, lower body fat is definitely going to help that. Also, women prefer a 1.65 to one shoulder to waist ratio. Well, the easiest way to get that ratio, that V-shaped ratio is to what? Is to have a smaller waist. You can't really make your shoulders too much bigger because it's kind of controlled by your yeah. bone structure, but you can make your waist smaller by reducing your level of body fat. Let's all like everybody here. If you want a, a new year's resolution, everybody here is on this call. Let's try to get below 14% body fat mm. below 14. If you can get to 10 kick ass, but if we can get to 14, I'm telling you right now, you're going to start noticing women are going to, you're going to look younger. Your skin's going to look better. Uh, washing your face twice a day. And then also having some sort of facial hair. No, women, tend to like facial hair, not all women like all facial hair, yeah. but we tend to like some facial hair. If you're going to have a long beard, make sure it's kept. And if you're not gonna have a long beard, make sure this facial hair accentuates your jawline. And then lastly, this is a big one. 
Uh, you want more of a round shaped face and you want the reason why I have it short on the sides is because when it shorts on the sides, it again accentuates the jawline. So those are like some small things you can do with looks maxing, also getting microbladed, get like the hunter eye look. There's a bunch of stuff. But if you guys want to go heavy, heavy into that really quickly, I would definitely recommend Fit X Fearless. That's what he specializes in. He was a dude who I mean, I saw the old videos of him. He was not that good looking and he like made himself into a good looking dude. So I I'd highly, highly recommend that. And then obviously Alex Costa is like one of the foremost YouTube fashion male fashion people on the entire on the entire platform mm -hmm. yes oh <laughs> taylor beats talk about leg lengthening have you seen that oh matt have you seen that leg I've yeah i've heard of that i heard of, i've heard of it initially in china that 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 young chinese men were trying to compete in the market by getting like fractions of an inch added onto their leg bones it's oh, horrific. they can do more than that they can do more yeah. than that um uh, uh the girl that i know I saw her at one of my events in Miami and she had like two or three inches added to crack her femur uh, and then, and then made it longer. And she couldn't walk for like six There's months. There's a dude who got six inches added. Cause yeah, yeah. I saw the dude who had six. Added. That part was crazy. And then it's didn't brutal. they do it to his arms too? Didn't they do it to his arms also? Or no, no, no. no. So you could tell because it's like, his shin is like longer, like way just okay. longer, but the arms don't like proportionalize. Wow. Crazy. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just anyway. Flex. But like the thing is, when you when you see that, guys, you have to understand like what does that mean? If if to somebody, I know I, it's probably extreme, but to somebody, if they're just so used to being not picked because of something like that, think of the evolutionary pressure that it puts on people to try to fix that problem. What would you be willing to do to not be the last guy picked at the basketball court? You know, you want to get to you want to get in the game too. What is it? One of the things that sucks is being rejected by women. Another thing that sucks is being around a bunch of dudes who are really good with women and then consistently being rejected by women and then seeing the women pick those guys. But it's also a great learning opportunity uh, in those situations as well to kind of see what those characteristics are that work so well. Just a few more and then we're going to do some Q&A here, man. Um, I love this concept and I almost wanted to put this on a fucking T-shirt, man. Women cheat for better. Men cheat for more. Yep, that's that's something that um I mean in my experience I, I shouldn't really make the claim but in my experience it feels like women don't really understand the way that men cheat. Men will cheat with somebody who is lower quality than his main partner and then women will say things like I've seen all these TikTok videos of women saying, "Well, that's what he wants. He wants someone on that level." And no, it's just it's easier. It's it's easier for men to if we're going to invest in someone, that's going to be our high quality partner. And if someone is going to be a very short term partner, then we don't have to invest in much. They can be lower quality. Women don't understand that because when they cheat, they're going for the higher quality partner. They're going for the perm. They're aiming usually for a permanent switch or a temporary um, sneaking around behind their main guy. And and they're, they're, they're almost always looking for better than and men don't necessarily do that. They can just collect large numbers of not as good because if you have the value to spare for them and they're willing to do that, it's like why these guys who are six foot three and make millions of dollars have seven women in the phone at all times. And they're all, they all think they're going to be number one at some point. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's really interesting. And then the numbers bear out what you're saying. Uh, if you guys want to read uh, When Men Behave Badly by David Buss, he talks about this concept of when women uh, cheat in a relationship 78% of the time, they report less satisfaction in the marriage when they cheat. Men report the same satisfaction if they cheat or if they don't cheat. And then when when men cheat 83%, or I'm sorry, when women cheat 83% of the time, they fall in love with their affair partner. And for men, it's about 29% of the time. So mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, it's really interesting. When women cheat, they tend to go for a taller guy who's better looking, who they potentially their ancestors could see them getting better genetics from sexy sons hypothesis. Uh, but when men cheat, it's like, it's just another opportunity to have more offspring. And maybe I raise this child or maybe I don't, but my, the likelihood of my genetics getting passed on is higher because a man can get uh, a several dozen women pregnant at once. A woman can only get pregnant by one man at one time. Yep. So that that's the difference there. And then here's another one. This is pretty controversial, but I really do. Uh, I would like to hear your uh, take on this. And this is the concept where, and a lot of women don't like when we talk about this, but uh, it's the concept of hormonal birth control changing the way yep. women see men. So the, the concept is, and this is the theory, uh, and there's been a lot of data on this and Rolo's on here. Yeah. So it's, it's great because he can talk about this, is the concept of when women take hormonal birth control, one of the things that happens is they tend to be attracted to less masculine features. Well, if you're a less masculine guy, that's a huge advantage for you. You get to get married to a woman who might have normally been out of your league and now you're married to her and now you want to have kids and guess what she's got to do? Come off the birth control. 
And now when she comes off the birth control, she looks at her, you know, her boyfriend who, or her husband who has f fewer masculine features. And then she's like, what am I fucking doing here? And then you get a 56% divorce rate. Now that's extremely reductive, but that's something that's been shown uh, in study after study. And I was wondering if you had any, uh, I know you did a video on this. Yeah, I did a video on it. I, I did a cursory amount of research before I made the video. I basically just went to one site and I said, okay, here's someone who seems to have done the work. I'm just going to report what she's saying. It was some doctor. Um, different people have different opinions about how much the research reflects it, but it seems to make a lot of sense to me here. I have the the sun regulating testosterone cycles and the moon regulating female cycles. Uh, it seems to me that it makes a lot of sense that what women would be attracted to is going to change based on the balance of hormones that they have in their bodies, which is something that changes naturally uh, uh, in natural conditions. When, when you take the hormonal birth control, they're adding hormones to their body. When you change your body, you change your mind. The body is the mind. You can't add something to your body and not have it change the way you see things because your body is the way you see things. So it's, it seems to me that overall the effect is that women tend to choose more nice guys when they're on birth control. They tend to be less attracted to the more manly, you know, the bad boy traits, and they tend to be more attracted to the nice guy provider traits. They're, they're looking for this and they're saying that they want this and then they come off of it and their bodies snap back into action and they go, well, what am I doing with this nice guy? He doesn't turn me on. And it, I mean, I can't, it's difficult for me to estimate how much of a problem it is. And I've spoken to a lot of women about it. And some of them say they've had that experience. Some of them say they have the opposite experience. It's hard for me to guess how strong of an effect it is, but it seems it certainly seems to make some sense to me. It's it's definitely an, an, an interesting theory. Um, mm -hmm. One last thing I want to go over just before before we're done, uh, before we get to the Q and A's here, is uh, this concept of like because I I've heard some women oh, when you do these reaction videos on your TikTok, which are terrific. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are like, well, men are complaining, and I do agree that there are some men complaining. I'm not complaining. The fact that w we live in a society where we as men are tasked with being in charge of the infrastructure and protecting society and holding it together, I am very proud and happy of the fact that I was able to serve my country in the military. There's no yeah. complaining on this side. And I would hope that you guys who are watching this kind of come to the understanding that when we talk about these things, you are never allowed to take a victim mentality here. You are not a victim. You're just being basically when you start playing chess against someone who's good at chess, you don't look at the guy and be like, I'm a victim. No, you just look at the mm -hmm. pieces and you understand the board and you learn the rules. What we're trying to do is help you learn the rules. That's all. We're not trying to we're not. And if you want hope, we're here to give you examples of people succeeding in today's current environment. That's what I have tons of testimonials. And that's one of the things I do is I want to give you examples so that you feel more encouraged to move forward. I want to help you. And I will, I've said this before, men and women and Rolo is the first person I ever heard say this. Men and women are better together than they are apart. They're, they're better um, working together. And in this type of situation, the best thing for men is to be their most attractive self. And the best thing for women is for men to be their most attractive self. So we're not, no one on here is a victim ever. As men, we're grateful for the fact that we get to go lift that weight and build that building. And we're, we're grateful that we get to serve in our military. And we're grateful that we get to, we get to be firefighters and police officers. And we, we're grateful that we get to protect our society. Where at no point should we ever, or any of you here, ever feel like we are a victim or that we're taking any kind of a victimhood stance ever. Does everybody understand? I just think it's really important that we do that because if we don't, you get into some people going into some really dark places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Yeah, sure. All right, guys, we're going to open up to Q&A. Ready? Uh, so we're going to do this real quick. I'll also, Rolo, man, if you have any questions, I'd love to get you on here. Uh, I'd love to, to have some stuff with you. We're going to go with, uh, we're going to start over here with my man, Rithik. Rithik, what's going on, man? And go ahead and unmute yourself, Rithik. Okay. Hey, Michael, can you hear me? Sure can. Fantastic. So I have three questions. The first one is on actually behalf of a friend who unfortunately could not make it here today. Um, but my friend's question to uh, you and Homath and Rolo, if you guys actually have uh, some advice as to what my friend can do in this situation, would that would be much appreciated as well. So my friend has a younger sister, like four years uh, younger than him. And his question is, uh, what would advice would you have for an older brother who's trying to protect slash like inform his older sister about 
these things that we talk about here on Men of Action or on Rolla's channel, these red pill uh, truths and, you know, these intersexual dynamics uh, concepts. Um, Cause he wants to make sure that, Hey, like, I don't, I want her to live her life, but at the same time, I don't want her to like screw up her pair bonding. I want her to find, be able to find a good guy, but I don't want her to be like a dress like a slut and like, and uh, attract the wrong type of uh, attention, uh, so to speak. So uh, what, actually, I, what, no, go ahead. I want to, I want to hear whole math, what he has to say about it. Go ahead, Rithik, finish what you're saying. Yeah, no. So just, just to sum it up, what, what would you guys uh, advise my friend? Cause he's really freaking out. Like, I hope he just, she doesn't get like, assaulted because of like the image she's portraying and he's just so it's just something to kind of assuage his uh his concerns yeah well get getting women to understand the way that men think can be difficult that's i'm trying my best you know uh mm -hmm. a lot of women have told me this particular part of my new version of zones it has settled some things for them they, they didn't understand that that men can have sex with women even when they have negative attachment like I don't, I don't want this girl around and I don't want anyone to know I have anything to do with her, but I will still sleep with her. If you can get her to understand that and to know when a man feels that way about her, that can be a really important part of that. Because women tend to fall into this trap of thinking, if I like him and he's spending time with me, he must be attached to me because I am attached to him. And that's not always the case. The same thing if you can show her charts and graphs and information about the more you know bodies you get the more pair bonding goes down and the more you're not happy in relationships do you want to be not happy that's what you have to communicate to them because the information and the graphs and everything it's not something that you know girls are into but do you want to be not happy is mm -hmm. is really the fundamental thing that you want to communicate this behavior is highly likely to result in you being not happy and here's why here's why because these guys have negative attachment to you if you behave this way it's like okay this girl is hot but then get her away from me when we're done because she doesn't she's not loyal she's the, she's not modest she's not keeping herself in a way that would be valuable to me long term you've mm -hmm. got to you've got to be able to demonstrate to her which behaviors she can exhibit that make men value her more and less and and, and you, she has to she has to want that as well and the other thing i would say rithik is kind of uh, pointing out to her that uh, excessive use of social media is going to cause her to come to like a lower mental state, meaning like she's going to consistently compare herself to other people. Uh, and then she's going to see possibly seek validation from social media or from her, the opposite sex. And in doing so, she's going to continually let go for, again, if you've ever met a girl who brags about sleeping with celebrities, that's who you don't want to marry. Okay. Yeah, right. That's the first girl you don't want to marry. And I know hundreds of girls who've done that. They bragged about they sleeping with celebrities and they say they dated them. And of course they didn't. And it's, it's that type of situation is what you want to avoid. Uh, so what I would tell Rithik also, just one quick sentence for them. You're a social media producer. You're not a social media consumer. Tell the girl or tell my friend. I would friend. tell the girl that. I would tell the girl that. Because that's where a lot of these, these mismatches come from is excessive use of social media. Interesting. So actually, um, an interesting thing that so my friend told me was that it was um, it's obviously not going to be surprising to us because we understand intersexual dynamics. But um, what my friend was said like his sister told him that he asked her, why did you post some of these pictures? Because mom and dad are like looking at your Instagram and like they're having some questions. And one of the responses was, oh, like all my other friends were doing it. So mm -hmm. I kind of I wanted to mm -hmm. do it, too. Yeah. And. So what, I'm curious, what do you guys say about that? Would your advice be, well, you guys need to be cognizant of the people you're making friends with, or yeah. is it an acceptance of like all, all young women in today's day and age are going to do that to a degree. So it's somewhat of a moot point to argue. Well, if all of my friends are doing it, what is it getting your friends? What does it get them? Are they, are they getting the relationships they want? Are they getting the respect that they want? Or are they just getting a bunch of likes and then no one right. takes them seriously? If if you do what they do, you're gonna get what they got. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that Control you're that. right. There, there is an inevitability to it, Rithik, because as men yeah. seek validation through sex, women will seek validation through attention. And if they do these things where they're seeking validation through attention, so for instance, men when he's seeking validation through sex, one guy might go to the gym, one guy might get a better job, one might, guy might become funnier, um, you know, work on a like, you know, his comedy, improv, whatever, and one guy mm -hmm. might move to Columbia. 
All of these are different ways to possibly get more sex. Well, a woman might say, one woman might be like, she might become a better public speaker. She might become a fitness model. And one woman might decide to do hardcore guy girl porn on her OnlyFans. These are different ways for women to receive attention. And so what you can explain to them is here's good ways of receiving attention. And here are ways that are not so good in receiving attention. Gotcha. Okay. And by the way, Rithik, that is becoming harder and harder as OnlyFans stars are now running for public office. Now it's like, now there's like, there is no lesson anymore. There is no consequence for doing shit yeah, anymore. Yeah. And so now we got to the point where it's like, you know, OJ Simpson stabs his, his ex-wife and this dude 56 times. And now everyone wants to do TikTok videos and, and star in a fucking uh, fantasy football podcast with him. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, no one pays for shit anymore. So it's like, it's the, 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 the conversation you're having, we're trying to help you have it. And I, at the same time, and letting you know, it's going to get progressively harder every year. Right. Yeah. No, no, we, glor- we, we glorify Cardi B for drugging. You guys understand the story about Cardi B drugging a man and then robbing him. She doesn't look at that story. And women in general do not do not look at that story as like, damn, girl, you had to survive. You did what you need to do to survive. Mm-hmm. No, they were like, go, bitch, get that bag, rob that motherfucker. It was yeah. not a thing where, hey, I had to steal from the from the candy store or I had to steal from the grocery store in order to get food to feed my family. Oh, that's poor you. It wasn't that kind of a story. This was a story of good job. A great way to level up is to steal, is to drug and steal men from men. And like, so you you hear that and then you would think that the entire, the entire apparatus of morality in this country would just come plummeting down on Cardi B for saying shit like that. But the complete opposite is true. And 13 year olds are screaming about their wet ass pee. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the, the complete opposite has happened. And so yep. that's where things get difficult. So I'm going to tell you good advice, but at the same time, I'm going to tell you things are going to get harder. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I mean, ideally, you know, it's you, you, you change the individuals that you can and, not, and then from there you change the society or at the very least, I mean, it's kind of like the quote, Rich Cooper, um, I'm paraphrasing him, but it's, you kind of like draw a bubble around yourself and the ones you love. And then if that's like the best you can do, then like, Hey, then that's great. Yeah, that's um, one of the, the one of the things I try to be pretty open about is that, you know, I don't have answers for everything. And one of my solutions has been to just move to the woods. I can't, <laughs> I can't make other people be the way I want them to be. So I'm talking to the trees now. Colorado is uh, good this time of year, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, we're, see we're, uh, but I was going to do the same thing. I was like, man, it must be nice in Seattle right now. You know, I was going to, I was going to do the same thing. Like, Hey, what's um, Vancouver like? What's Vancouver like? Yeah. Okay. Um, my next question, Michael, this is more so targeted towards you. So finally ran into this situation. So um, in instances where you and your female friends become intimate, but you don't want to be in a relationship with them. Yeah. How would you go about navigating the situation where like, you don't want to alienate like her and what? friends, but you also want to keep your boundaries and say, Hey, listen, like great time and everything. And you're an awesome person. We'll have to hang out with you. You already talk. You already, you're already saying too much. You're already talking too much. Okay. Shit. Yeah. Right. Like, like, you, you saying you, you prefacing any of it. I would do none of that. First off, think about how insane it is that you just asked me that question. Think about the, the majority of the human male experience. Do you think that their experience is, you know, what sucks is that my female friends want to fuck me. What do I do, bro? What do I do to fix that? No, that's yeah. your problem. The re- the reality is you don't have a problem. That's the first thing. That's not okay. really a problem. Number two, uh, women deal with being put in the friend zone a hundred X better than men do. That is something they're fantastic at. Women just okay. because they have so much sexual abundance. It's not a big of deal. I would be very blunt, very honest, up direct in the, in the beginning. And then when when you're in public with them, you treat them exactly the same. You right. don't treat them any different. Yeah. That is the answer. Got, got it. it. Got it. Oh, cool. Hey, and, guys, and for the rest of it, go ahead, Rhythm. I have one last question, but then okay. but you were saying something. So sorry if I interrupted you. Oh, real quick, guys, from this, from this time forward, keep the questions just a home map, especially for like the the, the interim right now, because uh, we got him on the on the line. So let's let's keep the questions just to him. Sound good? Well, perfect, because then this last question is more of a home math question. Um, right. So home math, I'm curious. What what do you think the future of marriage will look like? Because I know, um, Michael, you talk about how, like, listen, we're all going to be fucking sex robots. You know, that's, like, the answer. And then, like, the, that that uh, percentage of men at the top is going to stay relatively consistent. But then it's just 80% is going to be 90%, then, like, 95 then 98 mm-hmm. it's to a degree. Like, maybe I'm generalizing. But, um, yeah, what do you think that will start to look like? Will it be something that only a few men men can afford or have the luxury to indulge in or will it be just more obsolete than it already is because i mean to quote aaron curry uh we're living in a post-marriage society 
Well, and I don't think we're living in a post-marriage society. No, the the way okay. that marriage is going to be structured is going to depend on. It, it's like trying to predict the stock market. If if it could mm -hmm. be done, it would be done. But you, it's not done. It can't be done. In order for us to know how people are going to construct their ideas of marriage and what it is and how much they value it and why, it's going to be based on how much money I'm making, how much money I stand to make. It's going to be based on language. It's going to be based on abundance. It's going to be based on, I saw a TikTok today about a girl saying she was going to, she wanted to move to Menver because there's more men in Denver. It's, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> the economics of the dating market, the economics of, of economics, those sorts of things feed into people's perceptions in a way that, that gives structure to the way that they construct the idea of marriage. The way that society is changing now is just fundamentally unpredictable. It's it's gone so fast that a mm -hmm. couple years after you know a, a particular event, the the whole like entire concepts can be flipped on their head. Okay. So there's going to be different parts of the world that are going to stay. Um, th there are there are some places that still do. I, I had a a coaching client, female coaching client, who lived in a small traditional pocket of society. And they didn't really go out and interact with people very much. And she was asking me, how does she advertise herself to the men when it is frowned upon to just go talk to them? That's like, you don't do that. There are going to be their construction of marriage is going to be very different from yours and mine, depending on where you live, depending on how far outside you are of city centers, depending on what you watch on TV, our ability to keep our concept of marriage unified as a society is gone people are going to view it differently. So there's going to be right. some places that it works and some places that it doesn't. My personal feelings about the way that we've been going and things that have been consistent and probably will stay consistent is in the Western world and in America and in, in places affected by American culture, marriage will probably have less and less utility to men, but still not to women. Women, I, I, it almost seems like women have weaponized marriage. Like they're, what they're saying is, if you don't marry me, you can't keep me. And then the man goes, okay, I'll sign over my stuff. And then she leaves with it three years later. And it feels like that's, it's almost like a, like a war of, of intentions between men and women. I think that has been getting worse for a while and might continue to get worse. Other than that, I wouldn't really throw out any really broad predictions. What I would say would be look at the trends that are happening in society, social trends, look at the way that people speak, look at the way that people like things have gotten so much more economically hard in the last few years. That's going to mm -hmm. affect marriage. Look for the way that those things change. That's what I would say. And uh, I'm curious, do you think, oh, sorry, my man, we, at some point we got like, we have 50 other people trying to ask questions. Yeah. You've asked like five. No, you know what, then I'll, I'll, I'll recuse myself. So no, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. I'll let everybody else speak. Yeah, I love thank you, brother. You. Thank you, man. Talk to you soon. Uh, Eugene, go ahead. Ask your question. Hey guys. Eugene, yeah. My question, uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Great. Uh, so my question is about the quality in the chart you um you 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 showed us. So yeah, you you mentioned you are trying to simplify it down to the lowest level of complexity. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I think it's uh, simplified to the point where it's kind of like I'm meeting a bunch of important components to this. One of them is that uh, currently quality of pay scale works in the way that if you are equally skilled, regardless of uh, what kind of gender you are, or mm -hmm. if you are even a dog, right? Say, and you mm -hmm. perform at the level of model to train the ape, then you you kind of guaranteed uh, equal amount of money. At the mm -hmm. same time, it doesn't talk about like looks. And when you talk about uh, dating and uh, looking for mates, looks are one of the considerations for sure. So, uh, I don't think the statement that uh, there is no uh, society where uh, we can have both equality and uh, and uh, not have this kind of skewed uh, interest of uh, females towards higher status ma males is possible. So if I understand your, your question uh, correctly, it's you think we can have equality without having this skewed uh, market. Is that right? I think the market will be skewed uh, outside of the quality of pay scale. Sure. So, so the, the market is, I would say, actually the most skewed in a natural state. So if we go back to being barbarians, this is going to be the worst that it's going to get. 
because it's just going to be who are the men who are surviving? Who are the men who have power? Who are the men who are leaders? Who are the men who are tallest? The women are just going to cluster around that. Making civilization work is the process of kind of, for, of, kind of forcing this into this. That's how, why, why we have skyscrapers, because these guys are building them, because they're getting something for it. The more that they're alienated and the more that it gets like this, the more these guys will check out and the more that, you know, cities are now not safe anymore. So, I, I mean, I kind of want to ask you to rephrase your question. You, you, you're saying that you you want to maintain these like equality laws and and you don't think that it will. I, I'm not sure if I understood. Yeah, I guess my confusion comes from uh, understanding that your chart is about pay scale specifically, not some other benefits that come from society being the way it is. So, like we we do have society where the the law demands uh, equality of pay scale. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the girls who are uh, making same money as uh, as their equally skilled male counterpart still want mm -hmm. to date CEOs, and there are not so many CEOs out there. So they're still looking for higher status. So right. This is, we kind of are there, and the things keep progressing. Um, right. But, but are you yeah. talking about society progressing, or are you talking about the fact that there's like a low birth rate, six out of every 1,000 women want to get married? Uh, and the divorce rates at fifty six percent. Like it's progressing for sure. I, well, yeah. no, no one here is saying society won't exist in a hundred years. I'm just saying it, we're just saying it'll be very different. So Eugene, I, I guess I don't understand yeah. what you mean by society progressing. Uh, it's progressing towards. Uh, well, I think it's because of social media, and that's we we've been seeing a lot recently. That regardless of how much money you are making, you are still going to be look, looking for people with higher status and not, mm -hmm. not money specifically. Money is kind of result of higher status, but not always. And mm -hmm. there are also industries where uh, it can be reversed. Say like in modeling, uh, if you are a male model, you don't make anything at all compared to female model. So I think uh, we can achieve some level of equality, but not mm -hmm. the other level. Yeah. Well, th there's always going to be more factors than just money that play into, you know, attraction and women being, you know, the word is hypergamous looking for men who are better by yeah. the Patrice O'Neill terms. That's mm -hmm. always going to be there. When I when I draw these things specifically and I talk about money, the, the moral point that I'm trying to make, like the social moral point that I'm trying to make is that we should have a, a even playing field and let people run the race and then keep their rewards. And when we have laws that are like, oh, no, 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 we have to distribute the rewards to women more it artificially pushes us to this you know yes. untenable kind of all the women are chasing after it it's the artificiality of it that i'm complaining about it's the the artificial we have to put a woman in this role rather than considering purely uh on on performance that i think is having an overall negative effect on people's mental health and ability to form relationships that's what i'm trying to get at there so all of the other things that result in in you know the hypergamy and women you know looking for men with better looks or or whatever that's not something that we can control that's something i think that we should be kind of hands off let people pick who they want to pick just don't yeah. try to solve problems artificially okay makes sense thank you yeah awesome let's go to uh hayek hayek go ahead and unmute yourself hey um First and foremost, I want to say amazing presentation so far. That was like genuinely some mind blowing stuff. So I want to say thank you for that. But um, my question is, um, and pertaining to social media. So I try to use it as much as I can for my benefit rather than my detriment. But at the same time, I get like these weird, like you know, three or four uh, posts. That this like man versus woman posts. Uh, I don't know if like my Algorithm is just curated because that's kind of what my background mindset is. But generally speaking, like when I go out, I have fairly pleasant interaction with women for the most part, um, decent female friends. So I guess how can I go about or what, what advice would you give to guys that are trying to stay relevant, trying to understand what's currently happening, you know, in, in the social realm? without negatively being influenced by whatever algorithm or whatever feed is essentially trying to affect them. So if I was going to rephrase your question, you're, you're saying how can you go out and interact with people without having your mind kind of warped by what you see on the phone and the computer? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, I mean, the number one way is don't expose yourself to it. Go camping, you know, <laughs> go, go, go watch squirrels and birds for a while and let that be your reality and then interact with people. When you 
th there's there is a, a a problem that people don't really understand how their minds work, but they think they do. And when people are exposed to images, when people see images on the TV and on the phone at the lower levels of awareness, they think that they're being objective about it. They think that they're being that they're looking at these things and making their own judgments, but really that you're seeing something, you're having an emotional reaction to it, and you're acting out on it like more than 90% of the time. That's just the way that human beings behave. Exposing yourself to these things is going to make an imprint on you. You, 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 your mind is made of the ingredients you put in it. So you can't fill your mind with images and sounds and words and then not have your mind be made of those things. So if you are going to watch content that you think might distort your mind in a way that is going to, you know, make you less effective in society, you're going to have to spend more time stepping back and thinking about it, journal about it. You know, if you see something that bothers you on the phone, don't just swipe until you see something that doesn't bother you. Step back and go, what is bothering me? Why is it bothering me? What is it making me think? What is it making me afraid of? Why is it making me angry? And and is that real? Is it in the real world? Or is someone just using that to get me to click? So if you're watching so much content that you don't have the time to process it at that level, it's going to make an imprint on you. And it's going to change your behavior because it's all subconscious. It's all going to be, you're going to be out in the world. Someone's going to say something and it's going to give you a reaction that you're not even aware of. And you're going to react on that reaction as if this person saw the same phone video as you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's That makes a lot of sense. So yeah. more or less step back, write it down, put it on paper, analyze it. Yeah. And it'll have like less of an effect. Okay. Yeah. Slow yeah. down, slow down on the consumption. And if you are consuming things that you think might be changing your mind in the wrong way, analyze it to see what it's doing to you. And if you want it to do that, and also just, you know, spend less time on taking in the content. If you're looking at the uh, TV, you know, people have been complaining about this for 40 years. They used to say TV rots your brain. You know, if you're looking at MTV eight hours a day, you're going to have an MTV brain. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, one more quick question. So, one dilemma that I've kind of had is um, in situations where women might see me with either interacting with other women or just I would get some kind of pre selection um, and they would sleep with me for just purely validation reasons. And it's as far as like the interaction would go. Um, I know in the chart you've showed like the, you know, being a bad boy. And there's, there's levels to that. I guess, how do I go about developing the bad boyness? Because I actively see like cognitive dissonance in their face when I do something that could have been, you know, either portrayed in a cooler way, portrayed in a more so-called, um, you know, lover or bad boy way. Um, the way I've combated is essentially just writing a very solid field report after each interaction um, and analyzing it, but do you have any other like um, advice on becoming more of a quote unquote bad boy? Yeah, confidence is a skill, and I, I think that people don't always look at it that way. Confidence is going to be built of again the same way that that what you watch on the phone and the TV is going to inform your mind. Your the way that you act out your character and yourself and your personality and the way that you behave in a way that would make women more attracted to you, as long as you you know have looks maxed already, which is number one. The way that you act yourself out is a skill based on your perception of yourself and how you fit into the world around you. And so when I went about fixing my insecurities, what I did was I realized I had been constructing my idea of myself based on bad things that people told me about myself. And I went, oh, I well, I don't like those people then. And I don't want to believe them. And I started listening to the people who said good things about me. So now I am that. Now I am the good things instead of the bad ones. So now subconsciously, just like the phone, you know, informs you subconsciously, now I go out in the world and and automatically, without thinking about it, when something comes up, I act out the good things I think about myself. And it comes across really confident, comes across really comfortable. And it, it allows me to take, allows me to set the frame. It allows me to be a leader in the moment. Um, a big shift that happened to me during that time in my life is before when opportunities would come up, I would go, uh, excuse me, I have an idea that might be good if you don't think that. But And then after it, I just went like, 
blah, 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 blah. Like, here's what I think. And people reacted to that so much better. Even when I was wrong, people reacted to it better because I was wrong confidently and loud. It's, it's having frame and having confidence and liking yourself is based on believing that the things you are and the things you do are good for you and others around you, which is something that is way deep down in the roots. So you got to analyze that. Got it. So basically analysis and make sure whatever um, information I'm receiving is positive rather than negative. Yeah. And, and the information you're receiving from yourself too. So the messages you tell yourself about yourself. Self-talk essentially. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Will, what's your question, Will? So first off, super grateful to be here. I'm really excited. And uh, I may be kind of over the top, but I feel like this is a safe place to practice my expressing. <laughs> there so, you go, Will. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've been told I need I'm more monotone and whatnot. I need to work on that. So uh, that's why I'm doing it. That's great. Uh, Second off, um, really great to uh, have met Michael briefly yesterday. Um, great cause, great meeting uh, you briefly. It's a uh, pretty fulfilling meeting you after all these years. So um, with that being said, Home Math, thank you for being here. I mm -hmm. got uh, one question for you, and it's going to be centered around, uh, I think, what I think your credibility is, which seems to be macroeconomics and evolutionary psychology based mm -hmm. off uh, the little I know about you so far. Mm -hmm. So um, what you've said so far with Michael, it reminds me a lot of what uh, Dr. Uh, Jeff Miller and Tucker Max said in his book, Mate, and their, their old podcast, which is how uh, women are most scared of uh, being attacked, their safety, uh, creepy men, whereas men are most scared about being embarrassed by rejection. And hence, for that reason and many others, bars and clubs are terrible places to meet women. Mm -hmm. So on kind of like an economic standpoint, for me specifically, um, I know a lot of things matter like gender ratio in the cities. I've had the fortune of trying out many cities, cities that you would expect I would do better in, like New York, uh, Austin, Miami, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I haven't seen much of a difference. Now, keep in mind, I don't typically look like this. I usually have glasses. Mm -hmm. The leather jacket was a add-on for the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, recently I have been testing the fashion as well. Um, but with just the context I'm able to provide in this short period of time, um, and having tried, you know, things that uh, Dr. Miller's recommended in the past, like improv class, uh, you know. Uh, Will, Will, I love you. What's the question? You got two sentences. The question, the question is about? basically, uh, whole math, what do you think, based off you thin slicing me, mm -hmm. uh, could I do better uh, to kind of improve my results and reactions with women? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, you can always do. There's no top for men. There's no ceiling to how impressive you can be to women you based on what you just told me about yourself i think that you have made some progress you said that people complained about your monotone and now you are being more expressive you're moving around you're trying it it's working for for me i think i mean i'm not a woman i don't evaluate men but it looks to me like you are taking the steps to be more interesting and and promote this more dynamic image i think that you get it and if you keep doing it and watch what people react to and then keep doing the things that get you the reactions you want that it, it'll it won't take you very long at all to be where you want to be but there's never any ceiling you know you could always have another billion dollars you know what i mean like there's there's always things to learn and and skills to demonstrate and and ways to take power over situations and as long as you're doing it which it certainly seems like you are just like just keep on with that that would be my advice to you is i think that i think that I'm recognizing that you get it and keep doing it and watch for the reactions. Watch how people sense, react well? to. It. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. I think when I do talk to women, in my experience, mm -hmm. it's also the conversion rate. I hate to use that term, but 
the it's, conversion yeah. rates also it is what it is. it's not yeah. just the traffic so hopefully my improvement in expressiveness and whatnot will you know get me where i want to go yeah yeah keep doing it love it all right man thank you hey real quick i want to read one super chat real quick from tof uh, is there any research on the hormonal effects of lesbian hookups or threesomes for women? We joke that they reduce for head reduce her head count, but do they also contribute to the oxytocin fatigue that previous uh, male partners can produce? Uh, I have not seen the studies on that, but I have had several women on my uh, show and they've talked about having sex with men and having sex with women. And one of the things almost every woman has told me is that the attachment, like some of the crazy attachment that happens to them sometimes when they have sex with a man that just doesn't seem to happen anywhere near to the same effect uh, when they have sex with a woman. And that would make sense from an evolutionary standpoint. So as far as the oxytocin release thing, it, it seems like having sex with men, which of course you would imagine that's how uh, evolution would work. Um, it seems to be uh, more likely with men. Whereas I've talked to women before who, you know, have threesomes with their boyfriends or whatever, and they seem to be able to just like hook up with a woman and then move on and then not have that much attachment. So that would be my, my guess when it comes to that. Samuel, what's your question? Samuel Stevenson. Hey there, sorry about the lighting. I'm driving my car across the country. Sure. So uh, a little bit of background. Be anonymous because nobody cares. I'm just me. So mm -hmm. man and woman get divorced. Man loses custody. Man is toxic because man is red pill, uses pre-selection, has a bomb Instagram, all of these things. And so now to see the kids, a like baby, basically a babysitter is required. So from a developmental perspective for the kids, is it like bad for them to see like, oh, who's this person that daddy needs to be supervised by? Or is that like not that big of a deal? What are your thoughts? So you're saying for the for the emotional development of the children, for the personal development of the children, if they're exposed to their parents dating, how is that going to work on them? Is that the question? I think so. Yeah, you cut out for a second, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, setting a, a a good example for children by having healthy relationships is going to be really important for their development. It also, I'm under the impression that biological mother, biological father, with a good relationship with each other, is the optimal setup. So, if they see bio mom having a relationship with another guy, a bio dad having a relationship with another guy. I, I can't imagine, like, I, it must get confusing for children to have to balance all of that. Um, I'm not really up on all the research on that, but my my impression is that bio mom, bio dad with a good relationship is the healthiest way to raise children. And the more that your relationships deviate from what we consider normal, like if, if, a, if there are kids growing up going between homes and both mom and dad have a roster, that that is probably going to, seems like that would be the least optimal situation for them they'd be exposed to too much uh, uh tumultuousness in, in their their idea of what relationships are and how they work beyond that i can't really comment samuel can you hear me it looks like he's, uh, he, he legitimately is driving across the country yeah samuel, it looks like yeah he froze. it, it, it yes, is bad yeah, it is it is detrimental uh the best thing that you can do what i would recommend and this is just what i've heard from uh, from numerous people is the parent that ends up poisoning the kids to the other parent ends up paying for it in the end. Does that make sense? Yeah. I I have um yeah. I, there's a there's a guy I'm working with right now. I'm a consultant for him. Uh, he's a friend of mine. But I uh, and he asked me my opinion of other people. And what I tell him to do is like, hey man, look for evidence and testimony of these other people. Even though I know the other people that we're talking about are complete fucking frauds and scam artists. I need for him to discover it because what I don't want to be, Samuel, is the guy consistently talking shit about everyone else in my industry. Does that make sense? This is what happens sometimes when you get into a divorce and all of a sudden the wife is like telling you the, the, that everything the husband does is bad. I just feel like while it sucks and there's not a whole ton you can do in the end, the children do remember she was the one talking all the shit. Right. So is it better in this case to just stay out of it or to like be in that scenario where it's like, yeah, I'm going to. Basically, I would, hug, I would hug, you, need to be, to you, need, you need you need to be in your children's life and over time need to prove which one of them is telling the truth. Do you understand? You, you, you need to you need to value your experience with your children over winning with the ex winning with the ex doesn't right. mean fucking anything. She's gone. Yeah. 
the, you, your experience with the children outweighs that. Don't worry about winning. You will win by being a good parent. Got it? All right, Samuel. Hope that helps, man. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother. Let's go to uh, Nate. Nate, what's your question? Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, no, my hey, lighting man. is my lighting is pretty bad, but there we it's go. All right, nice panel. So, yeah, thanks. So, um, um, I forgot my question. Oh, there we go. So, uh, when uh, so I joined, like, I was one of the first people to be part of Michael's, like, program. It was, like, a 50-person cohort when it, when it kind of started. And I remember, like, going from having very few uh, kind of options socially and dating-wise to kind of it being, like, blown up. And, like, dating girls were typically reserved for, like, millionaires or athletes and stuff. And, mm -hmm. like, it took, like, it took took me probably, like, six months, some something like that. And... Um, to kind of get exactly where I wanted to be. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of been dating the same girl for like a few months. And I think for most people, this would be like ideal, like like very beautiful and several advanced degrees and all this stuff. And um, what I'm kind of curious about your input is like, instead of like complaining about girls and women and, and shaming them or whatever, why don't people just, um, just ignore all that and just kind of improve their life and, and, and improve their like ability to kind of attract someone or date someone and stuff and then just go from there and just ignore this whole like kind of shit show that's happening with 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 men and women socially and just ignore all that and just kind of find yeah. someone or date date girls and just live live happily i guess so because to me mean, it, it doesn't seem that difficult to me or i don't know i feel like you know with the same sure. amount of effort you're just instead of like mm -hmm. complaining that you could use the same amount of effort and just kind of be happy right. instead right so it, it sounds like it sounds to me like what you're saying is why do people not self-improve and why do they complain instead pretty and much well, yeah. yeah yeah victim mentality is it's a really it's like it's just an easy way out of admitting that you're the problem so if you are you know somewhere in this range and things are not working out for you, it's it's easier to say the world is making this happen to me than it is to say I haven't figured myself out yet. I have not self-maximized yet by my terms that I'm the video I'm creating. It's just an emotionally difficult experience to say, uh, Jordan Peterson said this recently, uh, uh, to, to suffer and to know that you're the cause of the suffering that is hell. It was something like that, Jordan Peterson said. To know that you're the cause of your own problems and you could have done something about it and you didn't. People don't want to admit that. They don't want to say, it's because I don't work out. It's because I dress like a child. It's because I don't have social skills. That's why women don't like me. No, it's the women who are at fault. And, you know, I'm the first person who's going to say, I think women's standards are crazy. But if you're not trying to meet them, you have, you're not, you're not doing the only thing that you can do about it. So it's, it's just emotional immaturity. That that's that would be my two word answer for your question. Emotional immaturity is the reason that people complain instead of doing something. Right, right. Uh, to me, like okay. the the other thing that kind of comes to mind is that um, like establishing a relationship with a woman and like having long term relationship, like having a finding a good partner, having a long term relationship, and having like children come out of that and all that stuff. That's not really like mm -hmm. an optional thing to do, really. Right. So it's not like mm -hmm. you're complaining about something that you kind of have to do right at some point in your life unless you know it's gonna be kind of sad if you don't um, yeah and that's like the other thing it's like this is not you know this is not something you just kind of complain about and just kind of put under the, the carpet this is something you have to kind of do right yeah um, so that's why i don't know but i just can't relate to but Nate, Nate, yeah, it's just anyway. easier like again one, one other thing i want you to consider this what if nate you know you decide so you have two people you guys go to high school together uh, this happens to me often uh, i'll go back for a reunion and they're like why aren't you married uh why don't you do this why, why are you posting this on your social media and the thing from their their situation and then and then also most of my friends that are 46 that i went to school with uh, have a weight problem um, the majority of them are overweight now yeah. uh, when i go back and they say that one of the things that, that has to happen is they need to justify their decisions in life. And if their decisions in life did not equal the outcome that they wanted, and I made different decisions than them and my outcome was better, then the better thing to say is, 
I got lucky or to make some excuse and then take the position of a victim mentality. Yeah. And so that's the situation here. Victimhood is a warm, comfortable blanket that costs zero dollars and zero cents to fucking buy. And it feels so fucking good when you have it on. And so that's the reason why victimhood is way easier. It requires zero calories and feels <laughs> fucking incredible. It is more addictive than heroin or cocaine. Victimhood yeah. is. So that's that's essentially the reason why, Nate. Yeah. 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 Makes Knowing, sense. It's just. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, knowing the difference between what you have power over and what you don't can be difficult. But if you don't do it, you're leaving a lot of quality of life on the table. Yeah, but I think like this problem of like reproducing and long term relationship is just, is just one of the like top three things you have to do in life, right? So yeah. you're kind of just just coping or just yep. I don't that's, know, just 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 that's making, pretty much it. That we we yeah, live in a society about something. Yeah, but we, you're like coping about something that's necessary, right? So it's like you yeah. need to like eat. Like imagine like you're just like starving, or you need to you don't put food in your body, and then you're, and you're like, why am I victimizing yourself? Yeah, like yeah. you're just like, and then you just die that way or something. That's what it looks like to me. Like you're just complaining and then just like weathering off into non-existence yeah. after a while. That's come. that's what it looks like to me too. I I think to some extent we live more and more in a cope based society. I think that people don't have the skills to understand what they need to do and then do it, and that's what I hope to change. I think you see it. Yeah. I think you get it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. That's, That's so great, man. But no, it's it's a good realization. And also, we don't hate them. No. And we, no, we never hate them. And we want better for them. That's the best thing. Okay. Awesome. Let's go. Uh, let's go to Joseph. Joseph, what's your question? Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. You can. Greetings from Europe. <laughs> hi. Thank you for your hard work. Mm, so my question is kind of maybe a little convoluted so like i'm a stem student and mm -hmm. i read a lot of psychology and i'm very curious what like percentage of your models are rooted in hard science and how much of it is like trust me bro you know which would still be fair because yeah. you seem to have a very good skill of uh, extracting uh, plausible theories from mm -hmm. your experience and observations but yeah like if if a model is valid it should like function in in different contexts, right? So what mm -hmm. I'm what I want to ask is, do you have any explanation from like your point of view for uh, homosexual relationships? Like, do they just function like heterosexual relationships, but with different roles, or is it like completely different? I, I have. Could a, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. Did you want? Were you done? uh yeah i was kind of done i, okay. I thought you might say that you don't care or whatever but <laughs> i don't i just don't know i don't know how to comment on it i haven't spent very much time reading about it it's not a part of my life i've had you know gay and lesbian friends but i don't interview them in depth about it uh, but from from what i can see there are you know sometimes blends of aspects depending on who they are and how they identify and who they're dating and what the it there's there's kind of the way that I think about it is that I make these charts for men who like women and women who like men. I make them, I make that because that's my life and that's what I understand. Um, you could think of it as masculine and feminine. And maybe, you know, I'm not saying that I know this, but maybe the way it works is if you have a masculine sexuality, you think of people this way. And if you have a feminine one, you think of people this way. I don't really know. I, I can't get into any sort of authoritative you know, I, I'm just not familiar with that world and haven't studied it. So my my answer to that is that if you are in that world and you find some utility in this, good. But if not, then, you know, it's just not my specialty. Uh, to answer your question about how much of this is based in data and science and how much of it is trust me, bro, the, I'm pretty open about the way that I construct these things. I have studied, you know, I went to school, I have two degrees. I have studied developmental psychology. I do a lot of reading. I read a lot of research. I base these things in in evolutionary psychology and in psychological, and you know, in the dating app data that's coming from Tinder and OkCupid and everything like that. I start with those things and I go, look, here are the facts, okay? And here's the way that I've lived, and here's the way that I've seen other people live, and these are my explanations. That's how I'm connecting the dots. So the amount that it is that it is trust me, bro. I wouldn't want anyone to trust me. The way that I approach it with my coaching clients is I say, here's the way it works, according to me, go apply it. And th there's very, very few times that people have come back to me and said, I didn't get a result. 
it's just seems to be really functional. When I give people advice, it usually works and it usually works right away. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Aquil, the all quadrant, all level, the Ken Wilber system. The reason that I think I'm good at that is because I studied that system and what it does is it reduces trust me, bro. That's what Aquil does. If, if, if people are not familiar with that, it's a trust me, bro reducer. <laughs> it, it takes all the different ways of looking at things and it, it makes sure that you're not leaving anything out or substituting one thing for another. Like one uh, thread that uh, Michael and I both commented on on Twitter the other day was someone was saying that social models of uh, sociology and psychology were replacing evolutionary ones. And that basically is saying that this is the only part that matters. And they're not going to get good results with that because all the parts matter. So when you apply this map, there's very, very little trust me, bro, in it. So that's the way that it works for me. Those are the results that I'm that I'm seeing. And I would say, if anybody's worried about trusting me, I would say, apply some of the things that I tell you and see what happens. I see. Thanks. That was like half of my question. The second yeah. part is, uh, what about consensual polyamory? I see like everyone in your comments shitting a lot on that and yeah. i do understand like from a moral perspective people don't like cheating but if it's like agreed upon by both parties mm -hmm. and they're like civilized and reasonably intellectual and like have self-esteem and i don't know independence yeah then it i know that it exists and it does work course, in some yeah. cases so what would be your explanation on like the existence of that and how it could work? Yeah, people construct relationships in all different kinds of ways. And there are some people who live that life and it works well for them. I personally would hate to see that become normalized to the point that it's the way that everyone is living. I, I don't think society would function really well in that way. If there are small pockets and groups of people who can live that way and it makes them happy and it's not doing things like, I would wonder what is the effect of polyamory on child rearing what is the what is the effect on the birth rate what is the effect on the quality of of life of children who are raised in those circumstances there's a lot that i don't know about that that i'm really only speculating on and again you know i'm, I'm the first to admit the, the limits of my expertise that's outside of it like how polyamory works and whether it's good or bad for you and what the effects are in society, I can really only guess. I personally would hate to see it become so normalized that everyone considers it. But I mean, I've seen people who do it and seem to smile. It's it's people, you, you got to make your own choices at the end of the day. Uh, there, there isn't that much I can say about it. So Wait, do, you, uh, do, you, uh, do you dislike it just from like a societal or moral perspective? Or do you like think it is to the detriment of like the individual because i remember the video about chimp world or mm -hmm. something t touching yeah. on this broadly like yeah. and uh, for me the conclusion was that it's just bad for the sub six man or whatever right yeah but then but that in turn makes it bad for everybody because those guys are still there you can't just round them up and turn make them into soap you know they're they're, they're still alive <laughs> and what if, if you what if you make them become sevens or whatever well that's that the way that women evaluate men is comparatively you, you cannot put um women mm. in 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 a like if you put women on a hundred women on an island with a hundred men and all those hundred men are considered tens in society before long they're going to separate them into the one to ten of tens they're gonna yeah. they're gonna decide who they like better and who they like worse so on the one hand, men have to self-improve. You have to be, you have to be taking care of yourself. You have to be providing value value. On the other hand, if all women are only pursuing the top sliver of men, there's nothing you can do. You can either get into that top sliver or not get into it, but you can't force women to increase what they think is the top sliver. There's got to be some kind of reasonable, you know, room for those men to to find acceptance or if they don't get acceptance it's going to be emotionally difficult and then they're going to take it out on something hmm. is there any explanation Maybe. for people like if they have success with women but they don't really have all those bad boy traits or like not not many of them but they are successful well, they are getting the looks you know who is yeah. that guy it's not really about having the traits it's about whether or not she thinks you have them so th this is 
what's going on inside her mind. It's not like an external descriptor of a man. It's like if 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 you're skinny and nerdy and you play video games and everything, but she thinks that you are a prince, then you are to her. It's the way that she evaluates. So if you are a certain kind of guy that wouldn't typically be thought of as a bad boy, but there are girls who think of you that way, then you're killing it. You're just doing it. It's about fitting your image and your external self into the mind of the women that you want to impress. Mm -hmm. I see. So like occupying a niche or something like that, right? Sure. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah. Well, okay. Then thank you so much for your... Of course thorough answers of course thank you so much awesome man thank you appreciate it brother let's get to the next one here uh let's do brent brent in new jersey what's your question brother hey you can hear me yeah mm -hmm. all right perfect uh this will be a short question so i know eye contact is very important and um i have like a crossed eye or lazy eye what's your advice on going about that should i just not care because i feel the uncomfortability of the other person sometimes mm -hmm. or just should i just zoo just just be myself be confident or whatever and it shouldn't matter yeah if you can't fix it and and you know if it's just going to be that way then it, when you notice people noticing it lean into it and turn it into a positive and just go like yeah i know that about myself isn't that like this <laughs> just be just own it you know the more that you like if you have a negative thing about yourself that you cannot fix the more that you don't talk about it and shy away from it the more uncomfortable it's going to be Okay, because I was wondering, should I just like kind of like I fuck them and like <laughs> just have fun with it like that or just whatever? Just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can say like I, I got one eye on you or something, you know, they make <laughs> okay. a joke out of it, right? To show that you, to show that it doesn't make you uncomfortable and then it will stop making her as uncomfortable usually. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you should do it, but I definitely want you to film it and then show yeah. it to me. I definitely yeah. want that. Uh, first off, number two, I, I have a lot of clients with lazy eyes and you are uh, on a scale of one to 10, you're like less yeah. than a three. Yeah. You don't really have that much oh. of a lazy eye. Oh. Uh, if, awesome. if it bothers you that much, then go get some, go get some tint, get regular prescription glasses and get them tinted. No one, yeah, I, no one from, will even begin to give a fuck. Yeah. From what I saw, I okay. wouldn't worry about it either. But, but as far as if you're, if you're worried about a weakness, I would say. You know, okay, yep. it was more from like the uh, aspect of like talking to other men because I know how men are in competition. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't that. care. I, I wouldn't care personally. By the way, yeah. if you want to talk, if you want to uh, see someone who actually takes his strengths and uh, weaknesses, puts them into strengths, watch my interview with Nick Santo Nastasso. He was born with Hanhart syndrome. He's missing two legs and an arm. And the dude is just like funny, boisterous, dating a supermodel and drives a yeah. Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And he, thank you. And he, he, and he makes fun of the fact that he has no legs. So yeah, yeah that that would be a great example. Uh, awesome. Michael, Michael, what's your question? Uh, Ken Bianca. Yeah. So this is a it's a two part question. Um, we we hear a lot about women and slut shaming or uh, abuse on social media via um, you know criticisms of their looks. <clears throat> However, I look at women's Instagrams, especially maybe objective photos that would not be that attractive. And all you see in the comments is, yes, queen, hot, gorgeous, hard eyes, hard eyes, hard eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, so part one of the question is, are women now living more in a uh, like a perpetual state of false victimhood? Or am I just in a, pos a positivity bubble? That's the first part of the question. And then secondly, mm -hmm. um, moving forward, Will more traditional daddy like men that tell them not always what they want to hear be more attractive? Or are we going to see men that are more sexually open and free and woke be more attractive as women, you know, make more money or 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 try to implement more of like a boss friend? Okay. Those are those are two pretty complex questions. The first one is you're saying that that women in social media spaces are changing in in such a way that they're in a perpetual state of victimhood. Was that number one? Yeah, like, I, I mean, I just don't see a lot of the slut shaming online that women no. that's out there. Yeah, no, that's um, right. So then what what does that have to do with victimhood in your question? Uh, false. So are they living in a false sense of victimhood or am I just in the wrong echo chambers? I'm not sure what you're getting at. So maybe oh, I mean, when you uh, say I, I false, I, yeah. I think I get it. They complain on TikTok videos that they're getting slut shamed. But when he goes to look at their content, they're not being slut shamed. They're being you know, told, yes, queen. Yeah, yeah. So where is that happening? Where yeah. is the slut shaming happening? I'm, I don't yeah. see it either. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. But them continuing to say that they're being slut shamed would be victim, the, the, taking on a victim mentality. Yeah, they could just be they could just be 
looking for a way to justify that feeling so they can yeah. say i'm being victimized i'm being victimized that's a that's a weapon in some people's toolkit is they just say the world is victimizing me and so therefore i get to do this it's it's a it's a brain hack it makes people let you get away with things so that kind of reverts back to what you were saying earlier about uh just lack of maturity and accepting victimhood on their part. yeah yeah not really getting what's going on with you can make you just feel entitlement and then act it out mm -hmm. and and for sure, I think that our that social media culture is preventing maturity to some degree. Um, and then the other one was you said the kind of men that are going to be selected, right? It's more attractive because I I've noticed that I have I have a lot of traits of, of more of the traditional masculine men, but mm -hmm. man, but then I also like go to Bernie Man and pretty and I'm like pretty sexually open, so it's kind of like I have both sides of the coin, and I'm trying to decide where which side I'm going to develop a little stronger. Yeah. Okay. So that's oh, all right. I understand now. So definitely there are more women than there used to be, in my opinion, who mm -hmm. go for unconventional men and who say, you know, you're not, uh, you know, the the 1940s axe swinging tie wearing kind of masculine man, but uh, women go for that anyway. That has to do with the development of the of the woman, how she constructs her world, what she values and, and how she sees that. You know, when I was in my prime uh, there were a lot of women who like I was broke. I was dead broke. And when women liked me, they were just really pleased to pay for me. Like I was the girl. And it was like, okay, we'll just do that. We'll just switch roles if you want. There's more of that than there used to be, I think. But when you're strategizing what to be, I don't know if I would necessarily privilege one side over the other. I would just say find what your strengths are and lean in, find what your weaknesses are, see if you can turn them into strengths. And then find out what kind of women like that and be around them. You know, or find out what kind of women you like and then be what they want. So in terms of of choosing, do you want to be the traditional masculine man or do you want to be the the modern, you know, softy? Which kind of girl do you want to like you? That should be your leading. Definitely. And I, and I think maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm explaining it too broadly, maybe. Mm -hmm. In every situation, I, I'm starting to realize there's like there's a masculine way of dealing with the situation and there's more of a feminine way of dealing with the situation. Yeah. And both could be leveraged uh, at, at better times. Right. Um, if, yeah. you're, if your woman needs empathy or or understanding, if you turn on a little bit more fem feminine, then that's better in that circumstance. But I'm but I'm also I've also encountered situations like um <clears throat> For example, example, uh, being accept accepting of things like OnlyFans versus not the situations where you're kind of you, now. Now I'm starting to consider, well, how do I really feel about this, and, mm. and, and which and which which stance do I want to kind of anchor more of my beliefs in, opposed yeah. to just opposed to using the masculine, feminine as constant toolkits because I've been using them constantly as toolkits, but I've also yeah. been feeling more lost and like I don't know who I am. Michael, can I, can I, uh, let me help you out here a little bit. So yeah, uh, yeah. if we could pull up the bo good boy trait, good guy traits, bad guy traits, I'm going to pull it up here real quick for um, everybody to see. Now, the thing is what it says, bad boy score, it doesn't say masculine score. Uh, and this is where things get a little weird because when you deal with Harry Styles or if you deal with Machine Gun Kelly. So mm -hmm. what you're going to see in Machine Gun Kelly is, does he come off as masculine when he wears a pink dress? The answer is no. But does he have facial symmetry? And is he tall? The answer is Yes. Does he have pre-selection from other women? The answer is yes, right? So he gets pre-selection from other women. Uh, and then also, does he have a gr great deal of money, a large amount of influence, and is he famous? The answer is yes. I've seen guys show up to parties, heterosexual dudes, pickup artists, show up to parties in wearing fucking dresses because they think that they can replicate what a Harry Styles or what a Machine Gun Kelly can do. They look like weirdos. Machine yeah. Gun Kelly is famous. There's one other part, Michael, being mm -hmm. disruptive. Being disruptive is a bad boy trait, but it doesn't have to be masculine. So boy George, a lot of women found him attractive, but he was not necessarily masculine. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. when you think of bad boy traits, so could, do not correlate masculine with attractive. For my girlfriend, she's from Southwest Arkansas. She does correlate masculine with attractive. One mm -hmm. of her best friends Every guy that this every guy that this girl has dated has been bisexual. She uh, correlates masculine with unattractive. OK, so it's just different. The other thing I want to tell you is, Michael, I would like for you to read a book called Why Women Have Sex by David Buss and Cindy Meston. And it goes over 237 reasons why women have sex with men. Women have what's called negative kurtosis, a large number of reasons why they'll have sex with men, whereas men, we kind of have like two.
she's hot or she has a big butt. You know, a lot of times she has a pretty face. She has a nice body. That's kind of it, right, for us. So that's that's the reason why, Michael. That's why it's going to seem confusing to you. Got it. You can have a bad boy trait and that bad boy trait not be masculine. That's why it's confusing. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Sense. Yeah, that, that's actually perfect timing because I needed a new book for tomorrow anyway. So awesome. Beautiful. Awesome, man. Uh, let's go to uh, Bradley Canah Callahan. What's your question? Bradley Callahan. Hey, how's it going? Um, I posted in the uh, chat section. So as simply as I can put it, um, you have a chart that has two axes, one going in the good guy direction, one going in the bad boy direction. Mm -hmm. um, my question is related to the subject of humor and its many different takes and uh, tastes and styles. And how do you think that fits into this chart being that it's such a important part of a person's personality mm -hmm. um in in some cases but it doesn't necessarily steer you exclusively in one direction or the other no um so how how do you juggle that given uh that a lot of the women that i talk to these days are uh, so it's it's like it's precisely the most problematic um, uh, part about your about my personality, at least, mm -hmm. um, is that I can be pretty out of pocket and uh, and disruptive, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily in a in a tasteful, graceful manner. Uh, right. Sometimes. That's that would be that would be your losing points there, or if right. you're just sort of if you're sort of not you know interfacing well with the with the society around you, you could be losing points there because you're if you're being cringy when you're trying to be funny it's like oh that was not competent so for for when men evaluate women they evaluate personality as kind of one big chunk there are many different aspects to it but it's just sort of one big thing for men personality is split into two things your personality has good guy aspects and bad boy aspects humor can be go under presentability and under competence. There are ways of making people laugh that make them think, wow, this guy's awesome. He's in control of the scene. He is, you know, elevating himself above everybody. Everybody's looking at him and respecting him. That's one way that you can employ humor. Another way you can employ humor is to sort of smooth things over and, and make differences between people disappear and to be really, you can use humor in an agreeable or a disagreeable way. And that's going to be most aspects of male personality are going to be split up between those two things. So it's mm -hmm. not really humor as a skill in itself, but rather your application of it. That's going to be, you know, you can use it in both ways or just one or just the other or neither. And that's personality is going to work that way in its entirety. You can do it one way, the other way, or both or neither. Okay, certainly. Um, so then I think what, what I'm understanding is that I probably am not as funny as a lot of uh, guys <laughs> you need to believe. Um, because if 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 I'm able to to judge my audience correctly and understand what they will find humorous mm -hmm. um, before I let some crazy shit fly um, mm -hmm. off the hook, then um, I would probably be able to get the desired outcome. And yep. in situations where that is not happening whatsoever. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. That's just a, an example of me not necessarily having a hold on on the things I'm trying to break apart. Yeah. Hey, Bradley, you, it, yeah. No, go, go, Bradley, there's a million other things going on here. Uh, your speak, speech intonation, if this is how you speak normally, there's a certain group of people that are going to like it, but there's a lot of people who are just going to not listen to you. They're going to tune out. They're going to zone out. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at on your uh, avatar there, but I'm going to guess by looking at your avatar that you don't have your social media fleshed out either. Uh, I don't know what you're like in the gym. I don't know how you are when you dress. The idea of just being funny and that's going to cancel out everything else that people don't like, it doesn't fucking work that way, man. Yep. You have to think about pretend you're playing a video game. I don't know if you've ever played Madden, MLB The Show, FIFA, whatever. Every character has attributes, speed, change of direction, acceleration, stamina, awareness, all these things. Let's get them fucking all up to 80 and let's get a couple of them up to 99. Let's see if we can get a couple of them up to 99. You worrying about humor? The answer to your question is you might be the funniest motherfucker who, ever, who will ever live. If your teeth are messed up, you have a haircut that isn't relevant and you, you're morbidly overweight, then those are your fucking problems. It doesn't make any difference how funny you are. Yeah. Yeah. Humor is one yeah. of the ways that you show up. It can't be your only thing. 
Okay. Got it, Bradley? That's uh, crystal clear. Love All it. Right. Anthony, what's your question, man? Anthony. Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, uh, two questions. I don't even know if the first one is uh, answerable, but just like theoretically, Homath said something earlier and made me think. Uh, so if everybody, if every guy is a perfect 10, uh, then what becomes like perfect 10 all across the board? What becomes the determining factor that separates that 1% for the rest from the rest? You mean in the island where all the men are 10s? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I would think that the women would watch the men compete with each other and start to see the winners as the most attractive. So if all the men are like exactly carbon copies, they're all six foot three and gorgeous something is going to happen that are that's going to result in some of the men ending up in a better situation having more power there's going to be some of them will be leaders some of them will make a, a shelter that falls down and the other one stays up and the women will go oh there's something about those guys that's better it, it after after enough time power is just going to concentrate with some of them they're going to make deals they're going to cut deals they're going to end up in different you know social situations that are going to make women pick the winners and and then in their minds, they're going to be less physically attracted to the ones who are no longer winners. Like on day one, they'll look at all the men and go, oh, look at all these men. On day 100, they're going to be like, this guy is not good for anything, even though they thought he was great 100 days ago. Interesting. And so uh, my second question, uh, it's kind of theoretical too. What would you guess, um, say our brain evolved to like the next level, whatever that is, mm -hmm. what would be like the... The determining factors then like what comes after tribal brain basically i don't know i mean to to guess at the next steps of physical evolution of the brain is that what you're asking mm -hmm. yeah like what what do you think what would what would be next and then what would be the uh, attractive qualities that come with it oh that's a big question i mean the <laughs> the, the way that the brain grows it, it through evolution and the way that the mind works is through increasing levels of abstraction. So when I talk about the levels of development, I show my levels chart, it's increasing levels of abstraction. Level one is just like, I see and feel. And level two is like, oh, other people see and feel. And level three is like, I'm in a web of people seeing and feeling. It's it's thinking about thinking about thinking about thinking about thinking. So the bigger our brains get, the more that we're capable of processing that. A lot of people ask me about my chart and they say, what do you think level 10 is like? And I just go, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not there. I can't, I, I don't know what's coming next. It's, it's very hard to predict what it, it is going to emerge out of a stage of thinking that you are not in and cannot get to. You can really only do that from the, from the inside. Um, the structures that are going to emerge from it, I think would be probably as unpredictable as cell phones were to Christopher Columbus. Anthony, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the nerdy bio biology answer here. There is no selection pressure anymore, so there is no more evolution. Uh, this is the way. Like I was talking to Dr. Buss about this. So in order for there to be an evolution, evolution, what happens is there has to be several different iterations where one brain, one type of human, thinks that that poop tastes good and the other one doesn't, and the one that eats the poop dies. There's one iteration of humans where they didn't have a fear of heights and the other one did. And the one who had the fear of heights, they all died. There yeah. needed to be some kind of selection pressure against starvation or against predators or something to that effect. There is no selection pressure. You just need selection pressure uh, uh, against mating. And at this point right now, you can you have women who can have anything right or wrong with them, and they're still going to have the ability to mate if they want to. And so because there is no selection pressure, there probably won't be any evolution. Now, that's the biological answer. The, the other answer is the one that Ray Kurzweil gives, which is basically re replacing your amygdala with a computer chip. Mm -hmm. The next evolution of, of Homo sapiens is to start adding. Basically, you become a cyborg. Uh, at that point, you know, you have the access to the Internet literally in your brain, the neural link shit that uh, Elon Musk is talking about. And as terrifying as that is, what's well, going to be terrifying for your grandkids is not the fact that somebody has a neural link. It's the fact that they don't have a neural link. When the guys with the neural links are the only ones that are employable, that's when that's when you start to see these massive dimorphic changes uh, between uh, different status of people. You start to see a caste system uh, come out again because some people have chosen to you know change their biology and some people haven't. So I think that's where you're going to see a, a pretty significant difference. But how it's going to deal with mating? I've, t I've told you this before. I've, I've said it before. Porn. When porn came out. It was humans were not ready for it. Or men specifically were not ready for it. 
And porn is, when you really think about it, it's just a technological advancement. Sex is not a technological advancement, but showing sex in a mass distributed way is a technological advancement. So we just keep going down that road. And then we get to the point where like, we, it's not just you viewing porn, but from your standpoint, either through a hollow deck or an Android or some sort of robot weird thing that feels like it's fleshy. You as a man get to the point where you can't tell the difference between having sex with a normal person and having sex with some artificial, you know, Android or whatever like that. When we get to that point, men are gonna choose the easier way. We're all, instead of passport bros, we're all going to become robot bros. And this is inevitable, guys. I'm just sorry this is going to be th this way. Now, it's not going to happen to us. It's going to be our great-grandchildren where this is going to happen. But I actually see that that's probably what's going to happen. You're going to have ways through AI to validate women through attention and validate men through sex. And they the, the, the genders won't meet each other. Again, th I believe in this. If you re read Ray Kurzweil's book, he goes over this at the end of the book. The singularity is near. And it's a really interesting description on where, where we're going to be in a couple hundred years. Yeah. Got it? Cool. Uh, I'm going to try to get through these pretty quick. Kate, what's going on, Kate? What's up, Michael? How are you? Good. My question was, what's your advice on niche maxing? Um, I mean, I haven't thought about it in particular. I've always personally just gone for like the broad appeal. Uh, if you know what niche you want to get into, you know, expose yourself to the culture. If there's a, If there's a niche that you want to be a part of, expose yourself to it and and again like this map is for what they value figure out what is valued and be it it's it's really as simple as that like when you when you identify one or two niches that you want to uh you know stand out in figure out as as in as much detail as you can what is it that causes people to elevate in the social structure of it and then see what skills you have that can apply to improving that part of yourself. Does that make sense? All right. Yes. Cool. Makes sense. All right, Kate. Awesome, man. Uh, let's go to uh, Ruben. By the way, there's a guy up here with his hand up named Zoom user. Zoom user, if you could go in there and actually put your name in there, I'd really appreciate it. Ruben, what's your question? All right. So, um, you know, I've been uh, watching uh, Home Apps content for uh, quite a while now, I guess. Since, uh, Thank you since around the 50,000 subscriber range, maybe a little hmm. earlier. So I've seen this uh, interesting evolution where, you know, um, the intro to the channel is very jokey, very funny, very humorous. Mm -hmm. And your content seemingly has become much more serious and much more meta and almost much more revolutionary. So I'm just wondering, uh, what's the end goal here? W what's the final outcome for this channel? Because I see the level of seriousness growing much more. And you've yeah. recently launched your new initiative online. So, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. Where, where's the, where's this all leading to? I the the end goal is more humor, so I'm doing a bad job. Um, so that my the purpose that I'm trying to get to is I have in my mind a bunch of these maps that I I have I know about them. I operate by them. I have been doing a ton of reading. They're in my mind, and I try to communicate them to people, and they don't get it. And I go, you, you know, you're you're hearing me wrong. You're hearing the words wrong. I want to get all these things out of my head and onto paper. I want to get them printed. I want to get them put in a book. They're going to be, some of them are going to be about dating and attraction. Some of them are going to be about morality. Some of them are going to be about group communication and intergroup dynamics. It's going to be, in in my view, it's going to be a, like a colorful, easy to read, as simplified as possible handbook of being human. These are the choices you're going to have. These are the ways you can make the choices. This is what's you, what do you get when you make the choices. This is what a boundary is. This is how you know that one of your boundaries is being violated. This is how you know that you're violating someone else's boundaries. It's going to be just dozens of these, dozens and dozens of these maps that are compiled into a book that are explained as simply as possible. That's my, my magnum opus. When I'm done with that, I'm going to take a nap. That's what I'm trying to get to. I want to get all those ideas out of my head and onto paper so that I can say, I did my best possible job of communicating this to the world. And um, I'm hoping that that results in, uh, you know, that I think you're talking about that levels test website that just launched level, level check.ai. Um, it's an AI test uh, for anyone who hasn't heard of it. It's an AI test that can tell you which of the levels of development you're centered at. And it's working perfectly. It's the, the guys who programmed it did a really great job. I'm hoping that we can use all of these ideas I have to use AI to evaluate people 
on many dimensions, your levels of development and your personality types and your skills and everything, and then match people with each other to create the highest possible level of synergy that we can in our society so that people who have something that other people are looking for can find it right away without having to go through all these really difficult, complicated steps of applying for jobs that 400 people apply to and one person has to read resumes. I want AI to do that instead. So it's, I want to create the map. I want to digitize it and and get it functioning to connect people to people in a, in a way to solve problems thousands of times faster. If I can get there, I'm done. Does that sound good, man? Oh, I think maybe he muted himself. Okay. No, that was awesome. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, Radislav. What's your question? All right. Can you guys hear me? Yep. yep. Awesome. Oh, Math, I love your videos, man. I just got your um, AI tests and I'm doing it right now. Awesome. Uh, but the question I wanted to ask you is, uh, I'm kind of a smaller guy with a smaller frame, just physically speaking. Mm -hmm. And so now, since I was a kid, I've always been kind of, I guess, intimidated by the presence of other guys. Mm -hmm. And I think that also comes in with kind of like insecurities around other guys or women. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to the gym regularly to do everything I can on that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've also come to the conclusion that I kind of need to take up boxing or some type mm -hmm. of martial arts to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on um, doing martial arts as a way of getting more confidence socially and potentially also increasing your bad boy score when it comes to women? It's it's going to work. It's de It will work, but it might not work as well as you think. It's going to be a really complicated formula that I can't really lay out for you. In terms of being smaller, like you're shorter, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, shorter and also just like not so broad shoulders. Um, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of that, my advice is number one, maximize what you can do physically. And yeah, fighting and being good at martial arts is going to increase that somewhat for you. But at some point, you don't want to be a fish trying to learn to fly. You, you want to find out what you have that is the best thing about you. So when you are out in the world and feeling like, oh, other guys are bigger and taller than me, what is it about you that you are more of than them? Lean into that. You know, if you're never going to be the best at size and height and strength, what can you be the best at? Show, like show that all the time and become known for that in a way that other men cannot compete with you in that realm. Yeah, that's that makes the sense. Be yeah, the best way to spend your effort is go with your strengths rather than fighting against that forever. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Love it. TH, what, uh, let's do Ryan Grove. Ryan Grove, what's your question? Um, yeah, so uh, I, I guess it's, it's like freshly been hit on already. Um, so I'm operating in a point of scarcity and I understand that, you know, the more scarce, the less confidence. So um, I'm trying to figure out where I should start as far as for, you know, um, providing abundance in different parts of my life, you know, as far as I dress, you know, the company that I keep, um, uh, just in all aspects, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm pretty low on the totem pole right now and I'm trying to like make improvements so that I can start to, to, you know, see, um, less of, of all different types of, of, of scarcity. Sure. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's a very broad question. It just sounds like what you're saying is you don't have a lot of access to a whole lot of value coming your way right now. And you'd like Correct. to change that. Correct. So the, the, I mean, the, the question you're asking is like a whole hour long coaching session. I'll try to boil it down. Like this is the reason that self maximizes taking so long. I can't put it all in one video. You True. gotta, you gotta start by knowing what you are good at, like do a bunch of things and see what you're good at and don't quit them before you can learn, you know, how fast you learn, know what those things can get you know how people react to them, know what it is that you want. Write to do a brainstorm, write a whole list of things, even if it's like being a clown, like don't don't skip anything. Brainstorm and then see how does it feel to imagine being those things. I asked uh, one of mm. my clients, what would it feel like to be a cop? And he said, bad. And I said, why? And he said, well, I'm imagining being a cop and what the experience is like, and it's not for me. And it's like, OK, so know the things you might want to be and then know which ones you would be the best at. And then those are the things for you to focus on. This is something I wasted a lot of time on. I wanted to be a thousand things until I was like 26 and I started trying them and I went, oh, that one actually kind of sucks. The earlier you can get those out of the way and focus on the things that are going to have the highest results for you, the more the world is going to begin rewarding you for what you can do.
So it's, it's the, the first step is a process of mental reorganization. What am, what am I good at that will bring me what I want? Focus on that. Thank you. Sure. I love it. Hey, let me read uh, some of these super chats real quick. I appreciate all you guys with the super chats. Uh, Ascension TV, Michael, what do you mean by status is status is status? What would you do as a 21 year old today uh, to get uh, mainstream famous? What I mean by status is status is status is that like what I said before is like nobody pays for anything. Meaning like uh, if you had a guy who worked in venture capital and you had Logan Paul, Logan Paul can get in front of venture capitalists before the venture capital expert can because he has status. Uh, you, you you find that like if somebody wanted to get legislation passed and he was a lobbyist and over here's Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan can get the ear of more people because he's famous. And also like when you consider things like who is like the most famous wrestlers of all time, you remember The Rock? The Rock used to be a bad guy. The Undertaker was a bad guy. Like the, the concept, what I mean to say is there's no good guy status and bad guy status anymore. There's no Iron Sheik and Hulk Hogan. That's not the way the world works anymore. There's just that, like when you think about how famous Takashi 6 9 is for being a snitch and getting his ass kicked, I promise you, if he went to a club right now, girls would be throwing themselves out of him to try to have sex with this dude. It makes no sense from from the uh, from my standpoint, but that is Man. the way the world works. There is that's what status 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 means. No, from from the world standpoint, you look at that and you're like, well, nobody's going to pay for anything. From your standpoint, that does not it's not an excuse for you to be immoral. But what it is, it's 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 an excuse, not an excuse. It's a reason for you to take action because you really aren't going to have to pay for anything if you screw up. Man, fail faster. I'm actually unfortunate, and this sounds crazy. I'm unfortunate that the first company that I took over equity of, which Men of Action, turned out to be uh, an amazing success. Most people go through a bunch of failures before they get to this point. My first try, it worked out. I got lucky. But that's the thing. Fail faster. You want to fail faster. You want to get into these situations where it's it's just uh, you, you learn from, from your mistakes. And so that's the thing, the situation, especially now, where it was before is if a girl, I'll give you a great example. A girl poses for Playboy in 1985. From that point on, she is a Playboy model. There's a huge group of things that she can do as a Playboy model, but now there's a huge group of things she can never do because she was a Playboy model. Correct. As of right now, you guys understand, the first lady of the United States, the previous one, uh, Donald Trump's wife, had, had posed nude before. Wake up. It's yeah. over. Like the, the, the system of like you being punished for your, because of morality, that is time period is complete it is done yeah. it doesn't exist anymore so you should have no fear when it comes to action that's what status 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 is status is status means um the other one is hey mike have you read any of patrick bed david's books if so are they any good uh i have his next book uh, on the queue i haven't got through it i gotta finish elon musk's book but i absolutely will patrick's a buddy i love patrick bed david he's awesome uh whenever i have like a quandary like i'm not really sure how to feel about something like political he's the first guy i go listen to um, the next one is um, uh, the next one. CHD, uh, shout out to CG. Uh, I miss Access Vegas. Access Vegas will be back in January. Uh, Rolo obviously uh, he has a rescued dog that um, has been injured. It's broken its leg twice. The dog can't feed itself. R Rolo has to stay in Reno to take care of the dog through the entire month of December, and that's the reason why we have not done an episode of Access Vegas. Uh, Th, what's your question? Thank you guys um, for the so super chats, by the way. Th, what's your question? So I was using chat GBT to write messages and it was surprisingly effective, but I kind of found that it was a little bit too nice and validating. Do you guys have any experience with that or any comments on that? I you mean writing? Ton. Oh, oh yeah. Ahead, do you want to go? You want to go first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, there is a fucking smattering of wokeness in chat GBT. We had chat GBT, like go through my entire program and then write answers for my questions. And it was saying, fucking nonsense that I would have never said. Everything is about consent and equality. And it was just crazy, bro. It was, it was, it, it was to the point where you'd ask it a question about some like liberal political figure and it would give this long description and you'd ask it about a conservative one. It was like two sentences or it would just like mischaracterize them totally. Yeah. There is so much wokeness. So you have to go into the parameters and take some of it out. Does that make sense? Like for instance, if I, if I were to say, hey, chat GBT, is it true that a lot of times women will say one thing and do another? Other thing. Well, we all know that's true, but ChatGPT will never tell you that that answer yep. is yes because it is politically incorrect. And so that's the, that's the reason why I personally, for humor maybe, but for the rest of the stuff, I don't use it unless I have someone who actually knows how to change the parameters. Yeah. yeah, I was having to tell it like, I know you don't like to be manipulative and I know you don't like using women for sex, but can you please help me with this? I like really mm. like this girl or something. <laughs> okay, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a little far. That, yeah. It wouldn't help me. Yeah, yeah. of course. 
Yeah, the the thing about um the the AI is it's not going to be objective and neutral. It's going to be what they program it to be. And the way that things are going right now is it's all technology is becoming McDonald's. It's all becoming lowest common denominator. It's all sugar, salt, fat. So whatever is going to be the most appealing and the least offensive to everyone is going to be what makes it. And that is, it takes all of the, it's just like white flour. It takes all of the good stuff out of human experience and it leaves it with only the stuff that bothers nobody because it has to, it has to be mass appeal. That's why I don't want Neuralink. I don't want chat GPT in my brain. I don't want it telling me to to not pay attention to reality and only say the things that offend nobody. That's that's like one of the reasons that I go all conspiracy theory about the the brain chips and everything. Um, it takes a lot of cognitive effort. It takes a lot of cognition to to. I think it was Michael Malice who said that, that there was the one of the main differences he looks at in people is the extent to which people believe that what comes out of their screens is a window into reality. Like if you're looking at the TV and the phone. And you think this is a window into a reality rather than a created perspective, then you're lost. You have to understand that you're looking at something that is a construction of another human mind. Hey, let's do an experiment. Hey, hey um, hold on, since, since you're here, can you see gallery mode? Can I have everyone turn their camera on right now? If you have the ability to turn your camera on, can you all turn your camera on for me? Gallery. Let's do this really yeah. quick. Okay. Is everybody cool? Can you guys see? All right. Beautiful. I want you guys to do an experiment for me real quick. I'd love if I could just get like 40 of you to turn your cameras on real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready? Raise your hand. Hold on. We still have a couple more guys doing this, but uh, whole math and I were talking about this the other day. So I think it's great. Raise your hand. If you believe that the media manipulates people, raise your hand. If you believe the media manipulates people, look at that. Isn't that crazy? Cool. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. If you think the media manipulates you, Couple couple hands going down. Oh, interesting. Is I, it, I we're, stopped we're... watching the news since I yeah. lived in the Middle East and yes. I had all that. Yes. Space. Correct. So that that's the point. It's like everyone everyone believes that the media manipulates people, but it doesn't believe the media manipulates them. This yeah. is one of the reasons why I there's a there's a fucking hardcore communist socialist podcast that I listen to every week without and I talk I talk to the guys on there and I tell them like hey man thank you for letting me see the other side of this these guys I don't believe in hardly half the shit they talk about and I listen to this shit every these guys are hardcore socialists and I listen to them every week just because I want to hear the other side because I know the attempt is at least there to manipulate me okay yeah. I read books by people I don't agree with uh I read I, I read books you know that talk about things that I don't agree with and that's the reason why is because I know I'm a human that is subject to stimulus and my own evolutionary program, but I'm also subject to stimulus. And given enough stimulus, I might start to believe in things that aren't true. And so yeah. that's why I've, I've I've tried to do it this way. Yeah, that's perfect. Love it. Uh, let's do a what really what, what quick one. Uh, this is for Homeap. Can Homeap explain expand on his? This is a super chat from Todd M. Can Homeap expand on his de developmental relationship matrix? It seems like the lower you are the more traditional the roles are and the higher, the more fluid. And the higher you are on it, the more fluid. Yeah, that's roughly correct. Uh, the more traditional you are, like tradition really begins at level four and it's the strongest at level four. Before level four, there isn't any such thing as tradition because if you're living in a society that is completely limited to level three, you're really probably not going to have writing. You're probably not going to have literacy and you're not going to have traditions getting handed down. It's just going to be whatever's going on now is what we're adapting to. It's more like a barbarian society. So when we're when we're talking about tradition in the traditional sense, that is a way of living that you have constructed and that you defend and that you hand it down to your children, they hand it down to their children and you try to make it not change over time. The the lower you are on the chart, the more selfish and the more unconsidered your perspectives are going to be. So if you get two people at level one, the only relationship they're going to have is, do you help me survive or not? If you're at level two, it's like, do you make me feel good or not? If it's at level three, it's like, can we use each other or not? At level four, you get to this perspective where people are thinking, do you fit into my world in a good way? Do I fit into your world in a good way? When you start getting into the higher levels, you gain the ability to have perspectives on perspectives on perspectives to the degree where you can recognize like uh there is something at level seven where i think i wrote um equals and opposites I, i'm not looking at the chart right now but i think that's what i wrote 
And that would be, whereas in level four, you see each other as opposite roles. You got your male role and your female role and they're complementary. And at level six, it would be, I am who I am and you are who you are. And we just appreciate each other for who we are. At level seven, you would be able to go look all the way down through the whole chart and say, well, we can have opposite roles and we can recognize each other. We can see everything more clearly the higher that we get. And it doesn't always you know, make relationships easier in fact, I think that if you get yourself up into those higher levels, it makes it harder to find someone who understands you. Um, they say it's lonely at the top. But definitely when you are in a relationship, it gives you a much higher degree of ability to recognize what's happening with your partner and respond to it. So I, th I think that was an answer to the question. Beautiful. Awesome, man. Miguel Del Ca uh, Castillo. Miguel Del Castillo. What's your question? Hey there. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Hey, how's it going? Um, up, up. For a uh, whole math. Um, mm -hmm. Did you, uh, were you super into um, so like the dating scene before you started your channel and started uh, making TikToks and stuff? Kind of. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, getting I'm sorry. A little, getting feedback. A little feedback. That's oh, all right. No. Um, I, before I started making my channel, the uh, COVID kind of, ruined my life. So before then I was doing pretty well, like all the way from, I would say 2007 or 2008, all the way up until COVID, I was out dating and I was using the apps and I was living in cities and I was, I was experiencing all different kinds of women and all different kinds of relationships. I never paid attention to any of the online content. Like I, I don't really know in depth, very many of the dating and relationship creators. I just sort of was doing my own thing and studying consciousness. Um, that would be, I guess, my answer to that is that I had a lot of experience before I made the channel up until COVID. That makes it, oh, sorry, Miguel. Can you answer, Miguel? Yeah, oh, you're yeah. yeah, I was, I was uh, muted again, my apologies. Um, so it was like mainly just like personal experience and stuff like that and just kind of personal research. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I use my personal experience as the lens through which I understand what I've studied, which is that model of consciousness and, you know, just, just various sorts of, you know, I've got uh, the two degrees. I studied relationships. I took a, you know, interpersonal relationships class. I know about John Gottman. I use my personal experience and the stories of personal experience that I've heard from others, which I have a lot of, especially from uh, driving Lyft and Uber, like long car rides with people would tell me all about their relationships and I would gather data. I use that as the lens through which I interpret what I have studied. So I, I wouldn't say that I'm basing my advice on personal experience. I would say my personal experience has given me like experiential flesh to the things that I have learned through study. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, did you um, did you like purposely like were, was your intentions initially when you started to like make it? Um, I'm not saying that it is hopefully, you know, it, it seems really promising what you're the content that you're making. And I think mm -hmm. it's extremely relatable for everybody. Mm -hmm. And hopefully like maybe one day it'll be the standard of what people will just look at. And they're like, I oh, so. this is exactly the situation that you're in. This is exactly how you should be looking at it. And almost like a, like a text. Well, you already described your <laughs> plan for the future, but like that textbook and you just whip it out and you're like, yeah. oh, this is what's going on. This is yeah, the this right here. This is where it's going. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. Did you um, initially, when you first were just making the TikToks, was that like your plan the whole time or you just like, no, I, I didn't, I didn't really. So I had a really different plan for my life. I was still applying for corporate jobs and everything. I posted a video and it took off and I went, Oh, now I'm now I do social media. I, I wasn't really, I wasn't building my social media presence at all. I posted a video and it got 3.8 million views. And I said, I have all the skills for this career. So I made it a career. That's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. You ever uh, think about making a part of it? That's just like ranking different hobbies to do. Like, I don't know. You mentioned before, like playing guitar versus, uh, uh, like doing the Rubik's cube or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I could take guesses at that. Like there's this whole thing. Everybody's heard by now that you don't want to put a picture of you holding a fish in your dating profile because yeah. that's the girls hate that. The reason they don't like is because they all live in the city and they don't want to date fishermen. But there are girls who want to see that you can hunt and fish. They just are not in the cities on dating apps. So well, from those towns and the girls that from my hometown, like those small towns, they love that stuff. They're like, yeah, they that's what I'm saying. 
it's that's why this is it's what's in her head that's how the map works is if you are doing what she values and what she thinks makes you a man she'll she'll love you for that so yeah it, it's going to be really culturally sensitive but yeah i suppose at some point i could flesh something out like that but i'm more of a, a container person rather than a content person this is a map of the container so i wouldn't say go fishing in here i would say find out if she likes men who fish and then do that that makes sense yeah yeah uh, max those hobbies out yeah uh, last quick thing so like when are you gonna go uh hang out with, uh Mr. Sartain over there in Vegas. <laughs> we'll see. So, Vegas. The, the, is... problem, the problem is we can't tell you when he does it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I, cool. I'm, I'm I, like, I, hey, I'm gonna yeah. walk around with twelve girls and my friend John. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, well, yeah. I, what, I, what am I gonna let anybody know? Whole math's in town. Who's the motherfucker yeah. with Michael Sartain on stage at Zook? And as soon as I talk, everyone will recognize me. I speak in one yeah. note. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll we'll see. It's I got a lot of options. No, you motherfuckers will not see. If Home Math comes to visit me in <laughs> Vegas, we will tell no one until a month later, and then he'll post the videos. That's how. It yeah. Works. What right, I so want though is that I want him. I want him to take that. I want him to take all his charts and then pull out his charts and point to stuff while we're in, in the club and like, yeah. like fucking, like we're standing behind Dead Mouse and like he's like pointing to this thing and like in the thing and they're like, there's just Dead Mouse like right there mm. and then everyone's like, fuck, I should have been a Dead Mouse. I would have yeah. figured out who Home Math is. <laughs> Yeah, Thank exactly. you guys so much. You guys have a great night. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you too. I love it. Hey, I'm really interested, Home Math, in some of your personal experiences. Um, I love one of my favorite ones was there was a girl that people were like, Are you guys dating? Yeah. And she's like, What? Why would you think we're dating? And mm -hmm. and can you go over? I want to hear some of your personal anecdotal experiences that shaped the way you believe what you believe. Yeah, one, that was one of the big ones. Um, there was a girl who was having really, really hard times, and we never had a, a you know sexual relationship but she lived with me for a while i just sort of supported her and we would go out and do stuff together uh and and people would always assume that we were dating and she was really offended by that and i was thankfully to a point where that like it didn't bother me emotionally i i just sort of said to her yeah we look like we're dating she was like what, what do you mean i'm a nine and it's like, no 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 we're on the same level that was one of the times where it really hit me that Girls that I'm going to like, this is, this is not just like porn stars and, and girls who have millions and millions of views on, on social media. It's like normal everyday girls now think that they're nines, even though they're really quite average. Um, without getting into too much detail about, you know, who she is and what she did, the, the details of her life affected her emotionally in a way that, you know, made her consider herself in ways that were not accurate. I would, I would have to just put it that way. There was another experience I had of when I was a, a child way back before the internet. Um, when I was 11 years old, I had my first crush on a girl in real life. Like I think every young boy has an experience of having a crush on like a TV and video game girls before they have a crush on a girl in real life. The first girl I had, I liked in real life, never liked me. I, I, I talked to her all throughout junior high and high school and we went to the same college and everything. And then after that, she kind of gained weight and I got in shape. Like that was when I cleaned myself up after college. And immediately the power balance shifted so much that she just was a, in the sleeper zone for me immediately. And my entire perception of women changed because this was someone who I had been putting up on a pedestal for over a decade. And now she was letting me sleep with her for over a year without any, without no signs of commitment at all. And also she, you know, cheated on her boyfriend with me and didn't tell me about it. And I was like, oh, that's how women treat you if they find you attractive. I did not know that. So numerous kinds of experiences like that. Um, lots of times that I met women on dating sites and then they came over and I, you know, I've been, I've been very promiscuous, which I do not recommend. It's not a, it didn't do good things for me. But I had experiences that taught me about women, like women would show up at my apartment and we would start doing stuff and I would touch her hand and there'd be a wedding ring on it. And I'd go, are you married? And they'd go, yeah. And I'd be like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, this is just not a big deal to you. Lots of things revealed themselves to me when I became popular in that way that I would never have learned about women otherwise. And I'm, I'm just trying to explain to men who have not had that experience, men who might not have ever been treated that way, that when you are up there, women will treat you that way. So when you are interacting with women to know that if they don't have some of that for you, you're in a bad position.
that's most of what I've extracted from that. I mean, I could go on about anecdotes all day long, but. Beautiful. Awesome, yeah. man. Uh, let's go to Tristan. Tristan, what's your question, man? Hey, what's up, Ometh? Huge fan, bro. I just had a hey. question for you about um the new diagram you had with like the Rubik's Cube uh, versus mm -hmm. the guitar. I was going to ask uh, when it comes to like whatever the hobby is, substitute guitar, Rubik's Cube, do you need to have that attraction there first for any hobby can, or can any hobby be attractive? Because like take guitar for player, for example, mm -hmm. the guy who plays like some Bruno Mars stuff or like stuff that girls really like, he's going to have success. But the guy who's like the goth heavy metal guy, he's probably not going to have as much success. So what's right. like the fine line there? Like when you were making that diagram and like what's yeah. kind of, so, what makes a hobby attractive versus not? Yeah, so so the Rubik's Cube thing, the guy who did the Rubik's Cube was more attractive to women because he was already attractive for other reasons. He was dancing and rapping and he looked good and all that stuff. Exactly. The, the non-attractive hobbies can make you more attractive if you're already attractive. There are hobbies and skills, skills, let's say skills, that can make you more attractive. And the guitar is not... Based on the skill itself. Based on the skill itself, Yes. And the reason that they make you more attractive is because they get you more power. Again, that masculinity section of zones is based on, can I create good conditions in my life and then share them with her? So this thing that you're doing, does it create conditions for you that, that make people respect you, that make people like you, that elevate you, that make you more money, that make you more popular, that give you social status? It used to be that guitarists and singers and rock bands were, you know, that's why I drew that. It's like grew up in the nineties. It used to be that that was the thing that elevated you and women would just go crazy for that. Whatever it is that's popular. Like you said, heavy metal isn't going to do it because it's not popular. Uh, earlier, we spoke to somebody about niche markets. If you want a heavy metal girl, then being good at heavy metal will get you the girl because it elevates you in the niche market. Right. So the skills that you're looking to have are the ones that are going to increase your power and your income and your social status and your quality of life that are going to make people like you and make people follow you and put you above others. That's going to that's gonna make women say, oh, he's like competent and confident. And it can make up to some extent for a lack of physical attraction to some, some extent. Makes sense. Makes sense. And then one other small question, like, because I know you have to do coaching too, uh, mm -hmm. about the dark part of attraction. How do you teach guys that if that's not like if they're not like inherently a narcissist or so, or a psychopath? Do, or do you mean the dark triad traits or do you mean bad boy traits? There's a if you look at the chart, it says under attraction. There's one that's labeled dark. Yeah, um, I'm superior. I always get my way. Nobody better mess with me, right? So or do for you even guys teach who, that at all, sorry, or do you even teach that at all? I do, I do. Now, I, I'm I'm trying to be really careful because a lot of people have misinterpreted what I'm saying. I'm not saying be a bad person and hurt people. I'm saying that women want to see that you have the ability to go dark if you have to. Like when there's a threat, can you turn against the threat? Or are you just going to be Mr. Nice Guy forever even when you're getting run over? That's not attractive. The way that I teach this to men is... It's, really, it's, a, very, it's a very difficult and sensitive thing and it's very unconscious. So when I talk to them one at a time, I ask them, what, what, do you, what do you say to women? How do you treat women? How did your last date go? And I try to show them areas where they could introduce this. And, and usually there is some kind of realization of, oh, she wanted me to say it like that, or she wanted me to do this. And I go, probably. Next time, maybe try being a little bit more this way. Instead of being nicer, be a little bit more like, take up space, be a little bit more I'm awesome. Be a little bit more inward directing of energy and Give see if she, you know, what's that? Giving yourself permission. That's what Michael usually. Yeah, does. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much exactly how I would put it. Um, one of the things I tell men to do is read 50 shades of gray until you understand why women like it. Cause you read it and it's like, it's cartoonishly bad writing. It's awful, but it, it, women read it because it, again, it's the salt, fat, and sugar of female attraction. They they read it and they go, this is what I want men to do to me. And men don't understand that. They go, oh, why do women like this? Well, it's the same reason that you like pornography. It's boiled down to the basic things that cause attraction. Noted. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks.
Sure. Awesome, man. Very, very cool. Okay, guys, uh, Zoom user, if you could change your name to a regular name before I call on you here real quick. Also, anybody else, remember, you have to raise your hand. For those of you who don't know, you go down to the bottom. Some of you, I, I know you guys are new. You go to the bottom where it says reactions. And in reactions, there's a button that says raise hand. Okay. When we say raise your hand, I don't mean raise your hand on camera. I mean, raise your hand on Zoom. I know some of you guys have never done Zoom before. It's, it's all good. Uh, let's go to Mark. Mark, what's your question? Yeah, what something or one second, just grab my notes here. <laughs> but I just had a whoa moment about what Homath was saying about his first crush on someone. That never happened for me until my second year of high school. Mm -hmm. I went to special ed school, so I never saw a woman until I was a sophomore in high school. And I also grew up in total isolation due to random chance. There were no children my age around where I lived for three blocks. Mm -hmm. So I am thinking about like how that's had a negative effect on me. And it's got to be a reason why I've been taken advantage of and pranked easily for most of my life. Okay. So you're saying that you, you developed a low social awareness because of the way that you grew up? Yes. Okay. So what was what was the not question, only having sorry, like... Asperger's syndrome, but uh -huh. it, these other things contributed to low social awareness also. Yeah. Yeah. So is the question like, how, how do you work on that or like, how do you yes, gain higher social work? Yes. What I did was I threw myself into the deep end. Like, I don't like bars and clubs. I just don't like big, loud, noisy places. But I went there and I said, I'm going to make the best I can out of myself. I changed the way that I speak. I didn't always speak this way. I didn't always stand the way that I stand. I didn't always dress the way that I dressed. I changed a lot about myself in my 20s. I looked at what was what made other men successful and I started reproducing it and now it's a habit and now the habit is who I am. Who you are is just long running habits. Is change your habits. Figure out what it is that make other men successful, copy it until it is who you are. And for me, it was like high gravity training, high altitude training. I, I went to bars and clubs and I was like, oh, I hate it here. But I didn't leave until I could impress those girls. And then I went, oh, 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 I get it. So now it's in my bones. Now it's in my yeah, blood. I'm like, like on this the is edge yeah. of starting to do that myself. But mm -hmm. There always seems to be something out of my control that stops me or slows me down. I'm talking about like way out of my control. Like uh, for the last two weeks where I live, all like promoted events got shut down because a club owner got killed by gangbangers. Oh and yeah. Random events like that and so on. Yeah, you can't control things like that. But what you all you can do is whatever your situation is in. Like if you, you know, live by yourself 45 minutes away from your neighbor out in Saskatchewan or something, you're not going to develop great social skills. Yeah. You the only thing that you can do is maximize what you have. So whatever opportunities you have available to you, go to them. Something that I uh, did not do appropriately in high school and college was there were a lot of opportunities. People would say, here are opportunities. And I said no to them. I said, I don't want to. That's not for me. And it's like, it doesn't re always matter if it's for you. It's a good opportunity for you to figure out what people like and how they are. Expose yourself to it. Yeah, it's, it sounds like good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Matt, if you need to leave at any point, let me know. I appreciate the question mark. A bunch more people asking questions. We actually have a couple more uh, Zoom uh, super chats here. One of them following up on the previous one about the developmental relationship matrix. Todd mm -hmm. M wrote again, he goes to follow up on that question. Does desiring and enjoying a traditional relationship dynamic signify my level of thinking is too low currently? No, not necessarily. No, there are a lot of people who are at super high levels of development who still want a traditional relationship. The, w it would signify that your level of development was was low or at level four or maybe five if you could not process why anybody would want a relationship beyond those terms. So I made a video recently for my levels testing website with a guy who his wife was saying, I don't want for, for me cooking to be what makes you love me or not love me. I don't, I don't want it to be like, if I don't cook, you love me less. I want for me cooking to be something you appreciate about me when I do it. And when I don't do it, you appreciate something else about me. So I want our relationship to, to integrate on many more levels. And his response was, there are things men do and things women do. And if you don't do the woman things, then I don't feel supported. That's, that's a lower level of looking at it. 
it doesn't based on the way that you asked your question i don't think that that's where you are it's it's it, being at a lower level is signified by not being able to process what people at higher levels are thinking and why they think that way and why they value it so i don't i don't think that that necessarily is you no okay here we go on uh one more this is from sal si on green room comma i saw the woman host say that you help incels even your friend, Miss Sears, thinks that men need to be themselves. Do women dislike self-help? Question mark. Do women dislike self-help? Yeah, I mean, I I think what he's trying to say is if women are telling men to just be themselves, then they like it. it it's crazy when I still hear women say this shit. And it's like, when was the last time a guy was just being himself and then you end up sleeping with him? Like, it just. Yeah, I, I think I understand. I think I understand his question. It was like they're not conforming to reality. Yeah. So do they just hate self-help? Yeah, I think it's because they don't natively in understand self-improvement because they don't really have to do it in order to get approval. Mm. I think that it's hard for women to process being a, a lower or middle level man and doing the best you can and having the whole world say no to you. I think that's something that they don't get. I think they assume that everybody is getting a certain level of acceptance. And that's when women say, be yourself. I don't think it's that they're opposed to self-improvement. There's an idea that I've been toying around with for a while. It's kind of negative. I don't know if I want to say it out loud, but there's something that I think like women might not be comfortable with the idea of lower level men improving themselves because maybe there's something in there about like they feel like you're supposed to stay lower level because then no, you're just sort of... yeah, you, you may have a hard time talking about it. I talk about this all the time. I, women don't believe in male self-improvement. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely right. Because one of the problems is, so just consider the status quo. Again, we'll go back to, you know, a situation with, uh, you know, cotton owners in, in the South in the, in the 18th century. The status quo was to, for them to maintain slavery, which is why they supported the rebellion, the, the, the Confederacy, right? The status quo helped them. If they went against the status quo, which were the liberals in the North, then that would, would was be very difficult for them. Well, what's the status quo for an attractive woman? The status quo for an attractive woman is that she gets a high status man and she's all, it, the more attractive she is, the more high status man she gets. If all of a sudden these men at the bottom figure out ways to make themselves more attractive to trick the woman into being attracted uh, yeah. for her to be attracted to him, then they're breaking the status quo. And that's a threat to the woman. Does that make sense? For, from, a, for, from a macro standpoint, looking down, it's a threat to a woman. Now, in actuality, she met a charming man who actually treats her really well. She doesn't feel like it's it's bad. But before she hears about this whole concept, I think she feels threatened by it. I think the status quo is much safer for women, or at least that, that that's how they feel. And that's the reason why they're like, hey, you men down at the bottom, short kings or what they make fun of these yeah. short men. They're just yeah. like, and then the other thing, the other way you can actually hear this is Either have women express to you how good they would be with women if they were a man. They'll all tell you, I would be incredible because I'd have a huge cock and I'd be 6'3". Mm -hmm. Ask them. They'll all say this, bro. It's crazy because yeah. they just think that you just it would just happen for them. Yeah. And then the other thing is have them uh, manage a mm -hmm. man's dating profile. An yeah. average looking man's dating profile. And watch how they're just mental view of the world crumbles and they start to become realistic. They start to understand yeah. how cruel women are to the most status men. Yeah. They get really upset when you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark, you got to mute yourself, buddy. All right. Beautiful. Uh let's go to the uh, next one. Gabriel Gabriel Anton, what's your question? Right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure can. Hello. Uh, my question is for home math. So mm -hmm. this might be a shot in the dark, but I have a lot of moments in life where I feel that my values and experiences are not present in my conscious and behavior. Mm -hmm. It feels like uh, living life in a poorer state, less perception and so on. Does it ring a bell? Makes any sense? Kind of. I mean, it almost sounds like depersonalization. You're saying that your behavior doesn't match who you feel you are? Uh, sometimes, like, so I feel like I'm uh, gathering a lot of experiences, perspective that would like put me at a certain level in life and how I deal with people. But sometimes I feel like I have these moments where it all goes away and I'm making poor choices and I can't uh, quite understand why it happens. Do, do, have you noticed uh, uh, consistencies in the times that it happens? Is it random? Is it when you're tired? Uh, it's random, but I'm sure it has nothing to do with tiredness, actually. I mean, it's a pretty big question. So you, you, you're saying, let, let me let me hear it one more time. You're saying that there are times when you are gathering experiences, but you're not processing them in a normal way that feels like who you are? 
Yeah, like I feel if this is who I am as a whole, like uh, all yeah. that I get throughout my life, I feel like mm -hmm. I um, have moments where big chunks of it are like not present. I'm not making the choices like I have this with me. Like it's not uh, with me sometimes, if it makes sense. Yeah, well, it's a really sensitive issue. It's it's a it's a question that is unfortunately too large for the short form, you know, format. But it a question like that is going to require a lot of really deep investigation into what is what is happening when what is what's happening in your mind when you do that. What is it that goes away? Why do you miss it? Why do you find it important? Do you want it back? And if you want it back, why? What function does it have for you to have that structure back? And I mean, in, in extreme cases, it could be something, it's some kind of disorder or something. It, if, if it is the way that you're describing it, it might just be normal self-reflection. And it might also be like dissociative on some scale or something like that. Um, I wouldn't be able to to speculate about any of that. But if you're having an experience like that and it's happening regularly and it's making you concerned or it's something that you want to solve, that would be something to to take take more seriously, spend more time on, talk to professional, get a journal, read more about it, read about um, dissociative or depersonalization and see if that matches and um, really investigate what it is that what what it is about that experience that is significant to you when you have the experience, like, why does it matter? Why does it like it? Why isn't it just as good as anything else? What is it? What does it make different about your life? And what are your? Why do you want to make it stop? Or how do you want to integrate it? That would be how I would approach that. Mm, I understand. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, we're, we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon. So I'm gonna do like two more questions, just because Paul Math is in a you know he's in a log cabin in Newfoundland, and yeah. he, you know it's already nighttime there. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't chop wood. I yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to snitch on his location here. All right, we're gonna try to. Hey, Zoom user, I'm not gonna call on you and let you change your name, brother. Get in there and change your name. Uh, Titus, what's your question? Hi, I got a question for Home Math. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. It's about levels. And it's about a particular thinker slash speaker. And I'm wondering if you've heard of him before. Mm -hmm. I think that he's normally level eight, nine or above. Uh, J. Krishnamurti. Oh, um, I mean, it, there aren't two Krishnamurtis, are there? They're not like father and son. I, I think that there's just one. Yeah, I have heard of him. I, ha I used to have extensive conversations about him with a girl who I was uh, trying to date, but never did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know vaguely about him and how he's sort of, you know, Eastern philosophy type person. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. He he tries to step in the same way that you would move if you're going above level four from mm -hmm. the tradition. He kind of steps above mm -hmm. Eastern philosophy. But um, I was just wondering if you heard of him and thinking that you might enjoy him as well because he spends a lot of time eight and above oh sure yeah 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 that's definitely someone who i would recommend people read uh you know if you're looking for really high perspective things i would say krishnamurti i would say ken wilbur i would say gurdjieff is a really good place to look um even you know for people who still might be around level four or five even uh uh what's his name who was that writer who was always drunk the poet bukowski uh, hemingway B B bukowski. hemingway's good yes. too yeah but bukowski is okay. a really good like breaking out of convention type writer but yeah, sure, Krishnamurti. Yeah, mm -hmm. recommend, recommend. Titus, um, awesome man, guys. Well, you. Titus, we 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 just do one question, guys. I need you to get your questions out in like ten seconds. Let's try to go a little quicker. Leo, what's your question? Hey, what's up, man? Um, I want to ask you guys. Do you guys think there's a sort of mismatch right now in society, in terms of how uh, men perceive attraction? Like women tend to like the opposite of what men tend to like. Like for example, like. Us men will completely marry the girl that works at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Women wouldn't. Us men, will, like, we like a small waist, uh, broad hips, or women like a small waist, broad shoulders. Like, mm -hmm. do you think society has sort of put off, like, a marketing that there's only, like, one way of attraction? I don't know if you guys understand what I'm trying to say. I think I see what you're getting at. I don't think, I don't think that the things you mentioned are really socially in origin like guys liking certain kinds of waists or whatever and and not really caring if the girl works at mcdonald's i think that these are just feminine and masculine ways of being attracted like a feminine way of being attracted is they want status they want a guy who's powerful yeah. a masculine way of being attracted is i want to be the power 
I don't care if she has power. And, and, and sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it, it doesn't even work. Like if she has more power than you, sometimes she doesn't respect you anymore. This is a, a big thing, a big uh, predictor of cheating and divorce is if the woman makes more than, than the man. And, you know, I've had people have arguments with me about that. Certainly there are women who can make more than her male partner and not lose respect for him, but on average. So, I mean, the reason that these things are so loud in society is because they come from people. That's my opinion, that they're they're mostly natural. Right. It's mostly naturally the way we feel. And then it gets reflected in our media and reflected in our society. And then people learn from it, if that makes any um, sense. Oh, real quick, Leo, just yeah. go look up some, there's some studies in evolutionary psychology that started back in the 1980s that clearly show everything you just said. No, it's not cultural. It is genetic. Yeah. It's genetics? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's genetic. Yeah, that's okay. my question. Okay, awesome, man. Let's, uh, James, what's your question? Uh, James Frosty? Uh, go ahead, brother. Sir. Uh, can you hear me? Can you yep. Sure can. Uh, my question is for Home Math. This is mm -hmm. on levels when it comes to the uh, levels of uh, social perceptions. Uh, how how can you... I know that there's like levels one through nine, and I will... Mm. I just realized I'm I'm I feel like I'm losing my question right now. Mm -hmm. Uh I want to know how could you use those levels of social perceptions to uh I guess grade yourself and grade the level uh what is it the bad boy traits along the bottom of your chart uh, your attractions chart. Okay, so and, yeah you're asking about the way those two things interact, the levels in the bad way. Yes. Trip? So yes. it's going to be the, the consciousness of the woman is going to determine the way that she processes that. So women who are way down at level three emotionally and morally, they're going to be just saying like, get me the bag, get me the diamond, give me the stuff. And then you did the man thing. Right. And the higher you go, the more sensitive they're going to get. And they're going to say your ability to understand me when I say something is masculine. It's like your emotional receptiveness is an impressive trait to me. So being able to know where women are on the level scale is going to show you in what way they're going to process the things that you can do for her. And, and, you know, again, it's not good and bad, but the lower you go, the more, the more crude it's going to get. So when you hear women talking about, you need to be six foot, six figures, all that, it's, it's like, that's mm -hmm. a really, that's a very basic, very okay. low way of processing that. It's like either you have the stuff or you don't. And the, the higher mm -hmm. that she gets in consciousness, the, the more she's going to be able to say, oh, you're a really unique individual who has some things quite strongly manifesting in you. And that that can be what fits in there. Okay. If that makes sense, yeah. Uh, that does make sense. A uh, quick little thing that I want to uh, ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, for a personal side, when it comes to the uh, levels of uh, perception, uh, I felt like at times that I used to go up and down the tiers, like you said, that people can steadily be at one and drop to another. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I've lost the ability to go to upper levels of the tier. Is there mm -hmm. any way to get that back, whether it's like repetition in thinking about something or is it just yep. going into deeper subjects or just rapid, repeated study? What is it? Or Slow is there down. Anything? slow down. So I was talking to somebody a little while ago who was asking me about, you know, when I came out with my levels video, everybody came to me and said, I'm a level eight, I'm a level nine. And it's like, well, here's the test, right? And not everybody mm -hmm. is up there. I haven't even scored at a level nine on my own test yet. I got a bunch I'm of eights and sevens. <laughs> you what? Yeah. I'm definitely not a level nine. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, sure. So, mm -hmm. um, so the, the way that you move up is by what I call thinking about thinking. And what that yeah. means functionally is th this person who said that uh, they were at eight, and then I said, oh, I think more six most of the time. Um, what I said was, those thoughts that you have during meditation that feel like eight, slow down when you're interacting with people and wait until you feel that way in your social interactions and then bring them up. Pause during conversation, like, like, Think about it until you know exactly what to say. And that's like working out. That's like a muscle. So 
<laughs> those higher level thoughts that you have, if you want to install them as a constant part of your personality, slow down and remember them. The the thoughts that you have it, when you're in the shower or when you're meditating or when you're reading a book, when you're in the more trying times of life, when you're in traffic or when you're in an argument or when you're at work, go slow enough to bring them out and it'll become a habit. That's what I mean by thinking about thinking. It's slow down and bring out the thoughts until you are the higher structure solidifies itself as your normal way. That sound good, man. Awesome. Hmm. All right. I don't know if we lost him. No, no, I'm I'm still here. All right. All right. I'm, James, I'm just that putting that again in my head. Uh I'm I feel like I'm processing that. And it, there's there's one bit that doesn't properly make sense to me, and that's mm -hmm. Uh, the piecing it apart, are you talking about the situation or the thoughts going through your head? It's about the thoughts going through your head. So when you are okay. in a situation um, that causes you to need to think on your feet, right? You can mm -hmm. downshift to a lower level. Like I had a client, a coaching client who I evaluated as thinking at level seven during his normal, you know, times. And then he was talking to me about his relationships with women. And it was really obvious that he downshifted to four. He was just worried about, am I doing the right thing? And what does she expect from me? It was all this very second person perspective. And what I, the, the advice that I gave him was you're a really high level thinker. The next time you're in that situation, slow down and remember what I'm telling you. Remember to bring this part of your personality into this part of your personality. If I had the time to be who I am over here in this situation that makes me nervous and don't know what I'm doing. What would I then say to her differently? How would I then behave differently? You got to learn okay. that skill. You have to learn that skill in the moment. So you're bringing the more mature aspects of yourself into the less mature aspects of yourself. And that's, what's going to cause the growth. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. I get Great. it. Perfect. All right, Thank James, you. James, thanks Thank for the question. Last question, Kevin, Kevin, last question. What is it, brother? Hey, yeah. Hi. Uh, this question is for Homaf. Uh, I was wondering, do you have any um, pictures explaining how sometimes, like your female friends, could be irrational? You give them some advice: "Hey, don't do this, or don't go on a date with this guy," and all their friend groups will say the same thing, will echo the same thing: "Red flag, red flag, red flag." But in the end, they still do it. They still go. Does yeah, that's. I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is the women will tell themselves any lies that they have to to believe that the bad boy is Prince Charming. If if she's attracted enough to the guy, she'll just say, oh, I can fix him, right? Is that what you're talking about? Um, maybe. I'm just looking for any, any like, depiction of why they will go against logic and will go against, like, reasoning. Well, and... because of what they want. It's because of what they want. It's because people want to imagine that they're going to get what they want in life. There there are people who always say, when I'm rich, and then they die poor. You know, people want to imagine that life is going to work out for them. So when girls are, you know, making decisions that are not going to work out great for them, it's because they want to imagine that they will work out great. It's, it's very, very difficult to get people to be reasonable if they would rather live in a fantasy. It's just, you just can't always do that. People are going to have to confront reality at some point, or they're just going to be living in delusion all the time, which is really the main, my main enemy is delusion. And if people don't want to leave delusion, they won't. They're not going to. But the best way to make people want to is just have them confront reality. If you do this, you get this, you know, there's nobody else made that happen to you. Does that make sense for your question? Is that what you're saying? Like when, when girls make irrational decisions and then it doesn't work out for them and they still say, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, it, it sort of makes sense. Um, besides like, uh, can you give me an example of how would you make them confront reality without them just, you know, maybe I'll, denying it or. Yeah. I mean, you can't, or... you can't really make them. You can, you can, t the most powerful way to do it is to take your hands off. It's very counterintuitive. So one of the things, one of the examples that I that I uh, always use is there was a girl who asked me how to make men stop being so sexually forward with her from her dating profile. And I said, can I see your dating profile? And she handed me her phone and it's just bikini picture, bikini picture, bikini picture. And I'm like, you're showing men 95% of your naked body. 
they're going to be sexual with you. And she said, but I can do what I want and I can express myself. And I said, okay, but if you do the thing, you get the result. So at that point, I told her the answer. She didn't want to hear it. Hands off at that point. It's just, you, you, you can tell people the answers and then, and then there's, there's a rule show, don't tell, right? If you can show somebody something, it works a lot more than saying it. Words don't have the same effect that examples do. Um, show people examples of it happening to others, especially if there's a video taken of it. Um, if you want to teach people about a principle, they have to experiencing experience the principle happening to somebody, especially somebody who is like themselves. Like people model themselves after movie characters. They go, that movie character is like me. So if I do what he did, I'll get what he got. That's one of the best ways to get people to change their minds. But if they don't do it, hands off is all that you can do at that point. Control is just not a, a gift given to us by the almighty. Sound good, Kevin? Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, the topic gets a little bit trickier when, you know, it, like the topic of pregnancy comes into play. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't use the protection. Now I'm, you know, like mm -hmm. pregnant. But I don't feel like I want to like abort. But you know, the guy's no longer in the picture and it's gonna yeah. be you know, so it's just like really sticky. And I'm like, oh man, yeah. like I can see it, it's gonna be really hard. Like, you know, it's really early, but yeah. I mean that yeah. communicate whatever you can to 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 whoever it is who's at risk, communicate it as much as she will listen and and try to show examples as much as she will listen. But when she said, like, you know, sometimes I quote the Bible. Uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, you know, if, if the people won't listen to you, stop speaking. Don't put pearls before swine. And when you leave the town, kick the dust from your feet. If people won't listen to you, stop talking. Like, tell them, te it. yeah, tell them everything that you can. And if they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. That's free will. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, sounds pretty good. Um, do you still have that uh, graph of the girl getting bored during a, the dating process? Um. I mean, I got a lot of graphs. Do you remember which one? Um, it was the one where their interest level falls and they find a new guy. Yeah, I think so it it's like a line graph. It's, it's the line graph. Yeah. I was wondering, like, um, if you can go into, like, why or dive deeper into why some pretty women get really bored. And it was because of the amount of options that they have or, you know, and. I mean, it's a complex question. I'm not sure if this is the one that you're referring to with the with the. The dating app cycle. Um, um, it it was the one where there's like multiple lines of uh interest over time, where um it starts off high, but then she falls off uh, over time and gets bored, and then she finds another guy, and then her interest. Line oh yeah, fills that's up. right, that's right. There was those blue and pink ones. Yeah, um, yeah. So line. so your question is what causes that? Um, what causes that if you're starting? to see that person how would you prevent that from happening if there is a way to prevent it from happening so it, unfortunately my answer to that question is kind of similar to the first uh uh answer if she is addicted to this peak excitement period which is kind of what's happening with apps and hookup culture and everything when you get into a new relationship you have that spark and that excitement and it's so much fun and it feels great and after time you start getting to know someone and they say familiarity breeds contempt well contempt isn't sexy so sometimes a girl will just start getting bored with a guy and she won't see him as superman anymore and then she latches on to a new guy who gives her that rush so a lot of these girls are just like drug addicts but with sex and they're just chasing rush after rush after rush after rush if you can't get them to understand you know that if you make better choices, your stability increases over time. And if you make bad choices, your stability is just going to be all over the place. I think there was another, there it is. There's your, if you make good choices, your life gets better slowly. If you make bad choices, you might have a lot of fun, but you're going to crash really hard. Um, it's, it's about getting people to grow up in a way and live in a way where they understand that you can't just have peak fun all the time. And if you make those choices that get you peak fun and then you stop doing the thing as long as, as soon as it's not peak fun, you're going to be giving up on this slow building over time. I don't, again, if you can't communicate that to somebody, you have to sort of let it go. But anything that you can do to, to teach people that there's, there's going to like, 
any relationship that lasts for a long time, there's going to be periods where it's not fun and you have to live through them to make the relationship last. That's a lesson that I think is lost on a lot of people in, in social media age. All right, guys, listen, uh, home math. Could you go over it real quick one more time, how everybody can get a hold of you? And you also had, uh, your, your link tree. Can you go over all that? Yep. Th this is, it's the number one way to get in touch with me is, a, a link tree, uh, L I N K T R dot E E slash H O E underscore M A T H. That is how you can message me. That is how you can find everything that I do. That's where the life coaching is. That's where you can get copies of the charts. That's where you can join Patreon, Discord, uh, anything, anything and everything that I do. That's my stuff. And you guys can also check him out on Instagram. You can check him out on, he does a, a bunch of stuff on YouTube and TikTok. TikTok is, is a, a pretty huge uh, where you guys yep. can find him. Uh, so yeah, guys, make sure you go check them out. One other thing, for those of you who are not a part of Men of Action, this might be your first call and you're interested in this level of self-improvement. I'm a performance coach. Uh, right now, we've just crossed 800 clients that we have in the company. We quadruple the size of the company every year because it's growing so fast. We try to use an evidence-based approach to help you become a better leader, more attractive to women, to, uh, to become a better speaker, to become more charismatic. If you're interested in learning more about that, go right there to that a link that I just posted in the chat. It's uh, Men of Action free if you guys want to join. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. There's going to be links to all these calls, plus several more, plus the first four steps of Men of Action are going to be free. And you can check out the interview that I already did with HomeMath that has done fantastic. I think it's probably 125,000 views uh, that we just did recently. So it's it's done really well. Man, I want to thank you a lot for coming on, man. I Hopefully we can do uh, do something else like this again. I know this is yep. different having people come on with their camera uh, yeah. to, to ask questions. That's great. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, man. All right, guys, we will see all of you. I'll be back to do this again in, in two weeks tomorrow. If you're in Men of Action, I'll see you guys in 24 hours. And on Wednesday, the oldest old school fucking female PUA of all time, Kezia Noble, is coming on my podcast. So you guys can check that out. We get into a, a few arguments about things. We don't see things quite the same way, but I think you guys will enjoy it. Home app, you guys, all of you need to follow him, especially on YouTube and in, uh, TikTok, and then also check out.